Hello, everybody. Uh, let me unmute uh, myself and everyone else. Uh, we are here for uh, session six of Knights Black Agents, the Dracula dossier campaign. Joining me today are uh, the indefatigable. Uh, uh, ex I have no, I have no puns today. I'm sorry. I'd like to ask for a do-over, but I can't. This is live. So, hi, everyone. My name is Grant Ellis, and I'm an independent content creator for tabletop role-playing games. I'm joined by Sharung, Lily, and Pro, and we are going to play Knights Black Agents today. So let's go around and uh, figure out who we are and who we're playing uh, and what we look forward to accomplishing today. Uh, why don't you take us away, T? That's me, and I even know how to unmute myself. <laughs> Hey, my name is Lily Sparks. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter, Lily Sparks with an X. Uh, I play in many games. I'm the girl with many lives. You can catch me streaming almost every day of the week. Uh, my schedule is no longer in my Twitter bio because Black Lives Matter, and that's all that matters in my Twitter bio. But if you do want to see my schedule, follow me, Lily Sparks with an X, on Twitch and all my schedules in there. And what am I excited for today? Today I am excited to... Go to the ballet. I, I don't know if that's a spoiler alert, but Spoilers. we getting fancy. Spoiler alert, we getting fancy today. So yeah, gonna miss uh, gonna miss Jess not being here today, but should be a good episode. And I play T. I am the only one that is not a spy. I am not qualified to be here. I am just a nightclub owner that knows a lot about vampires. I appreciate that. It is a little bit of a spoiler, but I asked the group, I said, what do we want to do today? And they said, a little bit of us time. I looked around, I said, well, what would that include? And Strong said, the theater. And I was like, yes, <laughs> let us go to the theater. Let there be dancing, they said. Um, and so that's what we're we're up to. Speaking of Sharung, award-winning game designer Sharung Biswas. Everyone put that in chat, all capital letters. Uh, Sharung, how are you? <laughs> Uh, I'm okay. Uh, I am happy. I just uh, wrapped up a campaign of Robin Shadows last night, so that was, uh, it's very nice. I rarely wrap up a campaign, they just peter out, so, you know, it was good. Uh, I'm a game designer, writer, and artist in Manhattan, um, and uh, I am playing Antal Puri, a Lebanese-Hungarian chemist who became a spy, uh, an assassin, and then got burnt out and then left because of like psychological trauma and now is like consumed with hunting vampires but now is reliving psychological trauma because the person he trusted the most in the world got turned and all kinds of sad things and oh and the person the other person he trusts a lot now isn't here today she's on a mission on her own and he's like no oh. <laughs> We'll see if we can uh, turn that frown upside down, as they say. <laughs> I don't know. Handstand. He can do one. <laughs> All right. Also joining us, uh, uh, you might remember them from Thursday, uh, for our solo side story, where we took a dive into Daquan's past, Pro Restarter. Hi, Pro. Hey, yeah. It was, uh, so glad to be back uh, playing uh, Daquan uh, officially now, back with the group. Um, I am uh, Daquan, the muscle, the gearhead, the driver, uh, shooter, the one who doesn't really talk that much, but maybe he's starting to talk a bit more. Um, so we'll have to be going to the ballet. We might be doing a little something like that. So when last we left, our intrepid rogue agents, who are fighting a secret war in the shadows against vampires yeah. all signs seem to be pointing to the fact that dracula aka the big d is uh looking to uh conquer england uh in takeover just like in the novels um our players had raided uh the scolomance and obtained an earthquake causing device uh, those that had been aiding and assisting them had been taken prisoner by the villainous organization known as Edom, which is an organization attempting to control Dracula. Uh, there's been other signs that Edom over the ages, the past 150 years or so, has been trying uh, to control vampires to use them for governmental reasons and have been failing to keep them under control. Um, our players followed an old lead and investigated one of Edom's... Uh, 
old military installations where they were pursued and attacked by an individual known as the Jack, a super powered super soldier uh, who uh, seemed to be responsive to Daquan's commands. Um, and it is now time for our rogue agents of Shadow to determine what leads they want to pursue next. But in order to do that, they have suffered uh, both emotional, mental, and physical stress. And they are recovering and recuperating. So they have decided to vacation away to a location known as their safety, which is a place special to them, a place of peace, and a place of sanctuary that they might recover. So tell me, agents, and talk amongst yourselves, where are you headed to recover? So I'm going to say I'm probably too worried to, to suggest my, to Atal's safety, which is his roommate's grandma from Oxford, because his, you know, his person just got turned, so he's scared of bringing attention to this poor old grandma lady. Um, so he, he's not going to sit, he's not even going to mention it. Okay. He would definitely, you know, I imagine that we're bunkered down somewhere having this conversation about where we're going to go. And T would totally be like, <laughs> well, I know that we've been hopping around all over the place and it's been a lot, but if you wanted to come to check out my hood in Korea, I have my nightclub, it's pretty secure. And although, you know what, we do have a lot of vampires that come through sometimes, but it is pretty safe. I always go there to lay low when I need to lay low called the cat scratch we would get free drinks on me all on me and i could totally put you up as well on top shivers when you say there'll be a lot of vampires there yeah um mine is the louvre there are some hidden areas for non-public displays that i know about if you wish to go there i'm happy with it but korea Sounds interesting. And uh, where, wherever we are, Daekwon is this kind of side-eyeing kind of tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I do an insight check on that side-eye? <laughs> Go for it. Uh, I don't know how that works. I could do a bullshit detector. Is it a bullshit side-eye? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> So, uh, joining our, <laughs> our heroes on the term used loosely, um, on this, uh, session is, uh, a, uh, the mechanic, one of Daquan's inside friends, uh, who helped them infiltrate the satellite station in Gibraltar, uh, a gent that's going by the name Chicken Little today. And he's like, ah, oh, shucks, I've... I'd, I'd love to go to Korea. I mean, they've got literally the best food in the world. I been craving some uh, bibimbap and some bulgogi and i mean i've never had any of that stuff but i've been craving it my whole life because i'm uncultured <laughs> uh, so i'm tall because one of the advantages of going to korea is it would help reduce the heat that's on us in europe yes. because we've been doing a lot of europe hopping if we like head away for a little bit it might even throw them off our scent like why are they going to korea like what do they know that you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. And I could definitely get you some good food. It won't be free. You'll have to pay for that yourself because I don't make food in my nightclubs because nobody trusts food that's in nightclubs. But everything else, I got you. My whole fridge is just filled with leftovers from nightclubs. <laughs> I'm going to die. I, I, I assume you speak Korean. Yes. Uh, I don't speak real life, but yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I have I have one phrase. I go jum chum chum yagi de juicio. Does anyone here speak English? No. Hey. <laughs> no idea what you just said. So yeah, fair. Uh, but I have one point in languages. So I, d I think she speaks Korean and Vietnamese and a smattering of like Thai, Mandarin. You know, just like a smattering. Yeah, sorry, Corey. Uh, my, 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 the Asian language I know is um, Arabic, and that's because I was raised in a very Western tradition, who like, you know, are like, oh, European languages are better, and I only know Arabic because my family spoke Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Since everyone mm -hmm. speaks here, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, I might as well speak here as well. So. There'll be plenty of people there that speak English. We'll have tour guides. Mm -hmm. It's a very common language, and if they don't, we'll just look aloof and touristy. We're good I can see it. I'm right here. I'll take us all around. Don't worry about oh, a we're thing. Really, we're really good at looking touristy as our British escapade showed. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that. Do exactly that. You'll blend in perfectly. It'll be awesome. Nobody's going to see us whatsoever. I also have six points in disguise. So maybe while we're going through like potential high heat areas, you know, like airports, p giant public spaces of any kind, we can disguise up a little bit and maybe Make Dracula won't see us. On some glasses. And I know that <laughs> remember Antal's symbol is a nipple piercing that uh -huh. he once got while drunk the only time he got drunk and did something wild. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he removed it, obviously, but like, <laughs> it, maybe it's like, he's like, uh, uh, okay. I mean, he's been to clubs since, but only for hits, right? Not for mm -hmm. like, relaxing or whatever. So it's like, mm -hmm. he's like, this is going to be interesting. What do I All do? Right. I'm not going to kill someone. Mm -hmm. A chicken little goes to lots of clubs. He's not very welcome there, but he goes to clubs. <laughs> you know, if you're a guy and you go to clubs, you're usually either 18 or 36. And he's on the later end of that. And he's just like, ah, oh, well, you know, I don't need that an ID. He only goes to a straight club. Grand. Well, you know, they're more like pool halls. He calls them clubs. <laughs> <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> What does he look like? Did we get a description? Okay, so, um, he, he, uh, yeah. gosh, I apologize <laughs> in advance chat as I describe Chicken Little. So, he's, he's about five foot seven and, and rotund. Um, he says his motto is why have a six pack when you can have the whole keg. Um, he describes it as a second gas tank because even though he's, uh, he looks out of shape, he could run a marathon. He might not finish the marathon, but he could definitely run it. He'd put in his best effort. He'd probably do like uh -huh. 17 miles or something like that. And then, um, yeah, he's got he's got dishwasher's hands, but he's very dexterous with them because uh, he works as a mechanic. He can tell you what every single screw on an airplane is because there's over like 489 different screws that you use on an airplane, and he could tell you every one because he used to teach that safety course. Um, his eyes, um, they, they're, they're kind – uh in in beady almost rat like in quality and yeah um How do i know this person <laughs> it's not me i have hamster eyes but it's not me no and i've and i'm not dexterous at all i got i got pink knuckles over here um and then uh, and i couldn't run a marathon are you gonna get me well it depends um <laughs> but uh yeah and then uh he's he's mostly known though um what, for what he calls uh, his dad's strength, uh, because he does have a family. He doesn't talk about it much. Um, but they're well taken care of, and they're comfortable. And uh, if GC was here, uh, she probably looked it up, and it's legit. He, he does have a family. Uh, but he lets them know he travels a lot for work, and he wants to make sure that they stay safe. And he was an old associate of Daquan's back in the, uh, uh, the SIS days, um, the special forces days um and he mostly was used for transporting uh uh trainers and instructors from uh the uk to africa and i i think as we we're um kind of talking and daquan has put their glasses on as a form of disguise the shades um they uh wherever, wherever we are we're still in the the Gibraltar or whatever um they just kind of look towards the group and they just say well whatever we go if we do go to korea it may be good for you i'm told i don't know why they'll that jack was after you and they look at you for a moment and they're just gonna say well, perhaps we can discuss it and find my more information and in regard to the serum and they kind of take it out of the satchel that they have. Oh yeah, I would. I would still want to do like chemistry on it or something. Yeah, we were gonna, we were gonna do that. They, yeah, you, you say that, and they say, "I'm going to send it to one of my friends. The least we have this on us, the better." But she and I, 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 I feel nervous because I tend to want to do things on my own. You know, like who do we trust? Who do we trust? I want to do this myself, but, but I, but I, you know, I trust you, so I'm like. 
I have a little, little antsy about the fact that you're sending it elsewhere. And I think uh, Daekwon can sense that and they say, do you know what this is? Have you ever encountered? It's called a sea serum. Oh, he, he literally cocks his head. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, um, I witnessed this when I was in Iraq a few years ago. It is an Substance that gives a person vampiric abilities for a short period of time. I shudder. Ooh, like witch vampire abilities. Like, you can live forever, you're immortal, you can only be killed by certain means, or is it more like you grow fangs and you, like, suck up blood out of people? I think it's more the speed, strength, and... Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good, too. The come downs are pretty hard, though. Hmm. Do you have to drink blood while you're on it? it oh, don't be silly, says Chicken Little. <laughs> you're silly, Chicken Little. Aww. Your name's Chicken Little. <laughs> okay. Uh, how did you even get here? <laughs> He's still alive. <laughs> I avoided getting killed by the Jack. Um... So, um, I actually have, uh, what I'll send you is, um, a snippet of what the Seaward Serum does. I, I'll send it, uh, I'll drop it in the, um, in the Discord, uh, and it'll show you, uh, some of the typical effects. Cool. <clears throat> cool, 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 cool. All right, so we can either go to secret rooms in the Louvre, or we can get out of Dodge, and by Dodge I mean Europe, and go party in Korea. I swear we can have, like, quiet time. It can be very quiet. Not all of the rooms are loud. There are private VIP rooms and a penthouse. And Antal turns, and because, you know, he's been very upset this whole time. He's like, do you know what? I haven't gone partying in, I don't know, a decade? Maybe yeah, this is good. Uh, this is when uh, I sip my coffee at yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I'm like, maybe this will be good. And like I said, leaving Europe might be really good for uh, getting Edom off our yes. trail at least for a little bit, you know? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. As far I, as we know, Edom is less, their presence is less outside of Europe, right? Like, I know they were in Algeria and stuff, but it's like weaker outside of Europe. So. They're a global organization, but there would be less of a presence there, given the current circumstance. Okay. okay. Mm. Cool. Well, give me the location of the uh, airport, T, and I can fly us there. I give you a very vague description of the airport, then I also Google an address, and then I show you a satellite image from Google Maps, and I go, it's there, it's this one, it's the building with, the, with all the space around it. I can be drinking tea at you right now. <laughs> Chicken Little's like, yeah, that's that's not the worst uh, thing to go on. If, if it's an airport, I've seen it. I recognize the shape uh, to Seoul. And, um, yeah, so uh, this is where Daquan and Chicken Little disguise as airline pilots and sneak everyone onto the plane in their cover. <laughs> Enjoy the flight. Oh, Chicken Little needs to be a flight attendant. Pushing the little cart. Like, no. <laughs> just me and I'm the only one who's the guest. He's the and only me. one who has a. Oh yeah, Anton, you have the first class tickets. You know. <laughs> um, Lily, have you spent much time in Seoul? No. In life? No. Okay, great. Unfortunately, so not. Have either yeah. of you guys spent time in Seoul? No, Can I've had one invite. This will be a fantasy. Please do okay. not take this as factual descriptions well, of this is, we have done because preliminary you, research. Because you picked Seoul, I was wondering if you actually knew about it. So like, I picked Oxford. I've never been to Oxford. Nah, I, I have read a lot about Korean clubs specifically. I, I know for some reason a lot about Korean club life, but not that much about so we'll pull any up, other yeah, Korean club. That's clubs. funny. Sure. We'll pull up a random Korean club video, and that'll be the rest of the session. No, but <laughs> I, I like. Yeah, so let's 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 talk about T's club. So what we'll do now is we'll describe T's club and sort of who's there, how it operates, um, and then what we'll do there to relax. Yay! Yes. Okay. So my club is 
It's one of those, uh, all of the furniture is black, but there's a lot of pink highlight. So like this, it's called the cat scratch. Cat with a K and scratch with a K. No, I didn't put a K in the scratch. It's just cat with a K and scratch. Cat scratch club. Um, it is definitely has a lot of black pink playing. That's like our number one vibe and music. Uh, it's probably like Can medium busy for music? club. Can I describe the music? Uh, I'm not familiar with it as a genre. Okay, so K-pop is kind of very... Oh, yeah, I, I know K-pop, so I oh, know yeah. like black pink. Blackpink is a K-pop band. Oh, that that is yeah, K-pop group. So right. yeah, so they're very they're an all female band. There's a, we do a lot of more of the all female K-pop than more of the all boys. Uh, so it has a very feminine, sophisticated vibe to it. But of course, it's also a nightclub that's like a high high end nightclub that people are getting messed up at. So occasionally we do have to deal with some you know degenerates occasionally a vampire will come in and i gotta come down and lay the smack down and be like you don't do that at the tees club um and yeah it's got private rooms that go like upstairs that are more for like business meetings they're not like quiet quiet but they're more soundproof so you can have a conversation uh and they're they're like nice vip booth kind of things and then above that is like a penthouse that i feel like is kind of like a madame salon for me where i can just like lounge there on a big comfy couch and take meetings as people come in and go yeah so yeah that's my club <laughs> all right i've i've well, like sophisticated and pop music are the vibes it's not like an yeah. underground club or anything okay yeah cool. It's like uh, a, it, it would be popular to people in their <laughs> early, like more mid twenties. Okay. Are you putting on a K-pop playlist? I, yeah. Right? <laughs> Why can't I hear the music? Dude, I'm so sad I'm, to I'm, I'm, today. I, I can't I hear tried, Roll Twenty. I tried to add it to Roll Twenty, except Roll Twenty crashed when I tried to. So, <laughs> so I've got to, I've got to, I've got to add it back. Handle the glory of K-pop. <laughs> I did. Okay. Oh gosh, it was too powerful. Well, I think yeah. the day one is very surprised because I think just like like Shrug said, I think they thought it was more like a dive, like some underground. <laughs> <laughs> underground I don't know gave y'all that impression. I'm very classy. Look, I drink with my pinky out. So we're relaxing and we're enjoying uh, the frivolities of of the club. It's excellent music, excellent drinks. Uh, great company. Um, everyone's very excited to see T there. Uh, and we are far away from uh, the vampires uh, in the current moment. Um, what does everyone do to relax while they're there? I would love it. I would love it if T takes the semi reluctant Dantal and drags him to the dance floor. Dantal's Absolutely. like, no, no, I'm going to sit here and drink sophisticated drinks. Mm -hmm. And you're like, no, come dancing. I'm like, I don't like pop music. And you're like, no, no, come dancing. <laughs> and that'd be really fun for, for Sean. <laughs> yes, we definitely going to do some dancing. If it makes sense with Grant and uh, their world, I kind of envision the club as like kind of a sanctuary for reformed vampires and people who are also caught up in the, the vampire <laughs> life like I was. Uh, so I think a lot of my employees... Yeah, I think I think uh, there's a lot of uh, those that were sympathetic, both uh, uh, Rinfields that serve vampires. I think there's a lot of uh, a signs every now and then vampires try to take spouses, brides, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And there's those that have, there's also the entire cult of Dracula and cult of other vampires uh, that have grown up. So I think this is kind of this is kind of where people try to try to get away from that. Mm -hmm. So while I'm dragging Antal onto the floor and like motioning to Daquan, I'm also going to like do a little hand signal to my staff who are going to be my three right hand people. Uh, one of them is a half vampire boy named Jakeson. And then there's also going to be another young lady by the name of Aura. And another person by the name of um, Shone. I think Shone, Jason, and Aura all take to on tall. Just get down yes. here. Yes. Sweat, sweat swarm. your tears away. Dead swarm. Like uh, on tall, normally he's you know he's an infiltrator. He's good at 
g going and adapting to the situation and everything. But now that he's not here to infiltrate, you know, mm. here to like, he's like at sea. And it's if you told him you are in this club to go kill someone, he'd be like, yeah, party, you know. <laughs> now that he's like, you're here to party, he's like, oh. I need to kill someone. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm getting the team to like swarm you and push you. And then I like motioned to some others to, to go for Daquan. And I'm like dancing up a storm, but I'm also like signaling to uh, signaling to some other like staff members to bring us drinks and snacks and stuff. We have snacks, just not like meals. And I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say when Anton, Anton's actually drinking, he doesn't drink very often because he likes to keep the wits about him. Mm. Then you're drinking, and, and you realize that when Antal starts getting drunk, he starts speaking in Hungarian. Oh, good. And doesn't realize it. He's just speaking in Hungarian, and <laughs> everyone understands it. Everyone gets it, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Of course. Um, because nice. you know Hungarian and Arabic are his native languages, right? So he's just gonna—he's like, yeah, he's, 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 he's like, this is actually really fun. We have to do this more often in slurred Hungarian. The music is so loud, I can't hear anything that you're saying. So I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I could totally. Eat. <laughs> That's got me in trouble in a few clubs. <laughs> yeah, dragged outside. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I just agreed without actually realizing what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't definitely You want to poison that like... person and break his neck? No, he wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daquan is definitely like like two fists and like two drinks and just like <laughs> dancing on the dance floor. It's very, very cool. mm -hmm. Cutting loose. Yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, T is not a good dancer. It's a very like dorky like. It's like, show me your best nice. move. Okay, you own if you the think... club. Anything you do is good dancing. That's true, yeah. No one can speak yet. Yeah, okay. yeah, Chicken Little's kind of like Rev Tevia from Fiddler on the Roof, where he's like, diddle deedle diddle digga digga diddle dum <laughs> he's, he's getting into it, if he well, was a rich well, man. In that case, I'm going to say, Antal is an excellent dancer. Yeah. <laughs> none of us being good dancers. When he actually gets drunk and starts feeling less awkward, he's a really good dancer. He's athletic to over what genre of dance does Antal do? I'm well, I'm gonna say Antal's main dance. I, yeah, I think he's good at regular club dancing. That's what he does. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Some like regular club, some like regular not club trained, dancing. He's not a trained dancer. Like, it's not like he's a ballroom dancer or ballet mm -hmm. dancer. Who can, mm -hmm. You know, but he's a good dancer. He's mm -hmm. very athletic and he can move and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. He pops and he locks and he breaks. He's got all the moves. Uh, it's, not, it's not Lebanese blood in him. <laughs> As the dancing kind of goes on, uh, Daquan kind of like bribes the, the person who's like playing the music and like gets them to play uh, some like dance hall or like some bashman and they just kind of like get into that. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it takes um, over. You've, you've got control of, of the dance floor and the music now. And it's a great night. As the night starts to settle down and everyone feels completely uh, recovered of any stress, any mental trauma for now, and, and currently those won't have any mechanical effects. Uh, they may might return based on uh, later events. Let me turn down this summer pop music I got playing in Roll20. <laughs> but um, that's random Grant DJ. That's licensed music, by the way. I licensed it just for this now. Um, but um, but uh, so, uh, question being, um, what leads do you want to follow? So there's a few you have. Um, the uh, computer hacker that knew you all had given you the address of one J.Q. Cushing in the Lake District in England. Um, uh, J.Q. Harker. And actually, there's a secret code name, Cushing, and uh, they gave you Cushing's address as well. And um, that they also, uh, in in the uh, researching in the Edom files that Daquan performed, Daquan found evidence of uh, an individual to be contacted in London proper, um, a, a PhD known as uh, Margot, and Margot... Uh, is tracking shipments of Romanian soil being brought to London. So it's up to you what leads you in a pursuer, if you have any others you'd like to investigate. 
I think at this point we're probably in one of the VIP rooms upstairs, mm -hmm. lounging on one of the things and going over everything. Can I say? Um, can I say you both are doing the planning and I'm tall completely like we downstairs. He's still partying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, I have one of those little, like, monitors of the yeah, club's, yeah, yeah. like, security camera footage, so I'm just, like, watching you. Yeah, I'm like, you're, like, oh. like, you're keeping an eye to make sure I'm okay, but you yeah. won't have to Like, you guys brought me to let loose, and I was like, oh, my God. It's gonna <laughs> yeah. cut loose. Um, it's like a baby monitor at this point. <laughs> <laughs> can, can I uh, uh, just say, um, as well, as a... Uh, T and Daquan are kind of left alone. Daquan just has this like fat cigar that like he is like mm -hmm. smoking. Um, and as we kind of plan everything out, um, uh, I, I think Daquan's gonna like ask you just like kind of bluntly. So why are you doing this? Planning stuff or watching Antal? Cause I just watched him do like five shots and I think soon it's gonna be a problem. We're gonna have to like pick him up off the floor. Ugh, it's not a clean floor. <laughs> <laughs> I meant the missions, you're not exactly military agent, you're a very fine club owner. Oh, thank you. We are highly rated. Um, but I, I understand the question now. She gets kind of like a thoughtful look. She probably also has a fat cigar and is just like holding it between two fingers and she leans back and she looks off and she says, I haven't talked much about my past, but you know, I wasn't always a club owner. I started off as a club goer, and I went into some of the clubs that humans aren't really supposed to go to. Classic story, young girl ends up with a bad crowd, except this crowd was vampires. And I got lucky. I was smart. I was smart enough that they wanted to keep me on as a friend, an ally, whatever you want to call it. So I spent some years doing a lot of stuff that I probably wouldn't have done otherwise. And then I had someone who took care of me, who looked out for me and helped me get out when all of it was done so that I didn't have to do that stuff anymore. So because of them and because I do know good vampires, I want to make sure that we get all the bad vampires out of here. And how do you know Jisoo exactly? I do not know. <laughs> Grant, do you know? Did we establish that in the first? I don't I know if we did. I think. Yeah, but I do know that you're Jisoo's contact. That's why when Jisoo said this is T, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I, I trust Jisoo, so I guess. Yeah, I think I recall Jisoo saying that I showed her around Korea a lot. So I'd imagine that we were friends probably from school years. Like, I was one of those. Um, I forget what they're called, but this international high schools in Asia. Uh, so maybe we both went to those or K-pop forums. You know, I know her. I've known her for ages. We met through maybe maybe she an has institution. Uh, there there are tons of like computer science conferences in Korea, right? Yeah, conventions. So maybe, maybe she was in town or for something like that, and and that's when you first met or something. Mm -hmm. Here's so maybe what she was doing some vampire research, something, figuring something out, and she met you because you're connected to that world. Here's here's another way to handle vampires. it too. It's okay if we don't know or remember in the moment. Like there's some right. people I know, and I'm like, oh, I can't even remember how they met. I think, uh, like James and Tricasso and I were talking, and James was like, Did I meet you five or six years ago? And which convention was it? And we were like, We can't even <laughs> remember when we met. But this is a good opportunity for when Jess comes back, where we're like. So which one was it? And have Jess be like, all right, here's how it really yeah, went yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. That way uh, Jess can yeah. fill it in. So by T's recollection, what she's going to go with yeah. is she's going to be like, yeah, you know, that girl likes to party. So we got connected because she was up in town for some kind of like hacky computer convention or something. And somebody was like, you got to meet T. She'll show you how to party and not just go to boring computer conventions. And then, yeah, you know, friendship. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, just imagine Chica Little's like they're actually not that boring, but he's not he's... <laughs> riveting symposia. Um... Chica Little, I didn't even know you. <laughs> Nobody I'm did. Always, I'm always there. <laughs> I'm always um, here. <laughs> I think uh, I think that one kind of takes like a long pause and they kind of roll the cigar and they, they, they wait for a bit. And can I put like a, a bullshit detector on there? 
Well, the, I'll let you play this out uh, in character, and I'll let you decide mm-hmm. whether or not you're bullshitting, because, I mean, we don't have all the information here since Jess isn't here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll, I'll let T decide how much of that's truth, how much of it's false. Had it the same incident. True. Yeah, it was all true. Yeah, yeah it was all true. Um I think, you know, with a with a bullshit detection, she's definitely glossing over probably trauma uh, a little bit in her past uh, with an overtly her personality. Uh, but everything she said is true, if not 100 percent of the story. Yeah, I think I think of that, then I think uh, T can de- definitely sense from all the time they spent together, just this interaction, this has been like almost like the coldest analytical that they can't even been, even more than what Anto has. Hmm. And then once it kind of stops, it flips and they, they just kind of smile and they just say, well, it's definitely a coincidence. But I sh- shouldn't be prying, right? You can pry all you like. I totally understand. You are all in this super serious spy business, and I just roll up in here being like, yo, what's up? Pew, pew, pew. But just know that I am here to support. Yes, I know. (laughs) And it is to support you. Full support. And whatever your reasons are, just know that I support those too. And that's when you see on your mommy cam, Oh, no. uh, that that uh, Antal is now on one of the raised platforms, <laughs> blindingly drunk, making out with one of the go-go dancers. Uh, not okay because that's visible, and he doesn't like being visible, but that is what's happening. It's, I think that's where we need to fade to black on the scene, where the camera kind of booms up. Like, there's dancers, like, Chicken Littles getting, being, like, asked to leave by, like, bartenders, and he's like, he was doing I don't know, he was just... He, we cut him off. We cut him off, and he was still trying to drink. And you get him out of here, and then the camera booms up. Uh, you know, Daquan's chilling, and then the camera goes up to the top of the platform, and it just goes up the legs of Antal and a dancer in, entangled and entwined, and ends ends with a final cut to black. God, I miss filmmaking, but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, alas, um, alas, so. Let's circle back. So what was the next lead we wanted to pursue? And everyone will be recharged. And I appreciate everyone sort of playing a, a more lighthearted scene with also a little bit of tension there, exploring each other's characters. Uh, just in full disclosure, you know, so uh, Lily knows uh, when Pro and I were doing our prep session, Daquan wants to know more about T. And it's like, oh, next session, we're going to start talking to T and try to figure out more mm-hmm. what she's all about. So mm-hmm. if it came out of left field, the, the audience knows. They're like, oh, here it comes. We've seen this. No, I get it. I'm surprised it took this long because she's a real big question mark in the yeah, group. Right. So what, <laughs> what are you doing owner? here? <laughs> three men and a little lady, right? Three spies and a club owner. <laughs> three spies and a club owner. Oh, man. Yeah, just here for the vampire yeah. knowledge and comic relief. Here for the laws. So yeah. which, which of the leads are we thinking about? All right, so we extract Antal from the clutches of this go-go dancer. We're in the mm. room. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say let's say it next day, right? Yeah. Like, you don't After know we where Antal goes that night. <laughs> you uh, you've had a week. You've had like a week and a half to recover. So he oh, goes oh, down nice. and just. Yeah, and so mm. either way, the next the next day the next day Antal has a pounding headache because he doesn't drink that much, mm-hmm. uh, and a strange bruise on his neck. Uh, mm-hmm. Not a bite, a bruise. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's like, do not talk to me about last night. Where are we going next? <laughs> do not talk very loudly. <laughs> he like, he like, uh, looks at you while like clutching his coffee, which he already finished. And he's like, I need more coffee. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I pour more coffee. Like um, yeah, what was the ballet... Um, lead. Okay, so we'll build to that. You know that there is a PhD student in London. Uh, there is um, the there's house. something suspicious occurring at the docks, and there are shipments the of Romanian oil. soil coming in, which ties mm-hmm. to the ballet. But y'all so don't know that yet. We know we've been doing a lot of stuff with Romania. 
So mm-hmm. it, it makes sense to keep looking into that, especially if it's not in Romania. Mm-hmm. We said we want to stay low from Romania for a while, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we have a lot of Romanian stuff going on, so it would be interesting to look at the Romanian, especially since mm-hmm. we were there when they uncovered stuff in Romania, yeah. so we might even know some of the big people involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plus, I feel like this is a few times now that the dirt and the soil has shown up, and we're yeah. not, we still don't know what's the significance mm-hmm. of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Let's go dig up some dirt. All right. And I'm like, please say that less loudly. <laughs> Pull out so, my guns slowly. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Finger the, guns. The camera cuts to London. You are in a beautiful Oxford library, not Cambridge, because uh, this is on Tall's place. And this is the meeting place of Margot. Margot is young with chestnut hair. It's sharply styled, uh, probably styled because she knew you were coming and you are spies. Um, uh, her glasses are less stylish than her hair, um, and she is comfortably dressed in the library. Huh? Uh, she seems as if she's trying to not draw attention to herself, which, of course, draws attention to herself, but she's just <laughs> in an Oxford library. She doesn't know any better. What do you do? So, Antal is very comfy. Um, uh, I think the Oxford library is Bodleian, if I remember. I read that in a book once. I don't know if that's true, but I think so. Um and uh, he, so he's very comfy. Uh, he uh, is, um, maybe, is it okay if he's the one who goes up to her while you guys are like stationed watching? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay, uh, yeah, so he is dressed, you know, he's dressed uh, as a scholar, like, you know, he's dressed well, like as though he's a scholar or whatever in the library. Uh, I don't know, let's say in this world, I don't know if this is true about about Bodleian, but um, uh, in most, um, Big name university library don't allow you in unless you're a scholar or you have um, some reason. God, he has alumni scholar. status. So he, but he has alumni status, right? So he can go. Um, so uh, he clearly, he clearly alum- alumni. Sorry, uh, I've got to play yeah. here while you're. <laughs> uh, uh, he goes up to her like you know, uh, and he's like, "Hi," um, just like making conversation. What are you looking? He's carrying a stack of books about. Uh, the pro- proteomics. Um, and yeah. Like, Hi. She she good, looks up and it's almost as if her eyes cut through you, judging you instantly. And then she swallows and she goes, "Hi." I'm like, "Lovely day, isn't it?" And I point out the window where it's like lovely, or not. <laughs> it was like I was like, "Yes, it's a it's a lovely day." Uh, and, I, and I and I invite myself to sit next. I just like sit by her at her desk. What are the What are the books she has? Like, what subject are they? Oh, you noticed she has many books on Slavonic and East European studies, particularly stacks and stacks of books on Romania and Romanian culture. Uh, she has what looks like some ancient folk tales on uh, wolf tribes. Uh, and by that, I mean like wolf clans, wolf groups traveling through Romania. You may have encountered some. Um, and it looks like she's she's essentially, and she has a stack of papers, and she's uh, probably checking checking sources to see if the sources and the papers actually line up with the books. I, in Romanian, I ask her, "Oh, do you speak Romanian?" She responds fluently. I'm not going to do a thing where I rattle off right, a bunch right. of fake Romanian words, then go, right. no, which means that. yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm like, oh, cramp. that's so cool. And I start, I make up a story about how in undergrad, like I, uh, I did a lot of uh, work. I did, uh, I tell her, oh, I did undergrad in America. Um, and I did a lot of, um, uh, because, you know, in Britain, I think you can't do minors stuff as easily. Um, as far as I understand the British education system. So I'm like, oh yeah, because I'm holding chemistry books. I can't say I'm a scholar of Romanian. Um, but I say, oh yeah, I, I was really interested in Slavic folklore. And it's so cool. Is that is that your field of study? Oh, uh, yes, I'm finishing my PhD in it. Oh, what's, the, what's, the, what's your dissertation topic? Well, and then we cut to the clock starting to tick and we dissolve back and she's explaining more and more and okay. then it cuts right, back right. and she's going on and what it all means is <laughs> yeah um, so, so she actually explained like, yeah 
yeah, my aim was to like build a rapport with her, you know, like, like you have yeah, a but... she has a rapport, and then she kind of looks, and anyone else, either Daquan or T, can interject if you'd want. She just kind of looks at you, she goes, Hold on, are you the spy? And then, uh, so, so, uh, pa, pa, freeze time. Uh, what did, did, what did we know about her? She is here for, remind us, everyone. How is she connected to the shipments soil? of church? To the soil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, how is she connected to the soil shipments? Yeah. yeah. So, Daquan would know, Daquan would know that Edom was trying to get in contact with her, but they, uh, they have not yet because they're currently stretched thin because there's this group of people going around like blowing their stuff up and stealing their earthquake <laughs> devices and um <laughs> but they you haven't been that? able to <laughs> you did give it back uh but they haven't been able to follow your 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 lead um so uh so so i think she and you might oh, have an investigative skill that would help you get through oh. this um i have yeah. A question yes. while Antal looks at his sheet. While I'm standing there and I'm eyeballing all these like documents and books that she's got, does anything would anything line up in my mind based on my vampirology or Ooh, occult very, studies? Very, yeah. Like any names pop out of tomes or lore? Uh yes, most certainly. So uh you can tell that she's very, 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 very much trying to draw connections between uh, what happened to all of Dracula's brides. Because there's mm -hmm. more than one, and maybe some survived, maybe some didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll catch Daquan's eye, and I'll just like point to my ring finger, and I'll like mouth the words, Dracula's bride. Not very subtly over the shoulders. <laughs> nice. This is why you don't bring a club owner. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> So, she has, so, so do we know if Edom, we, do we know that Edom has not made contact with her? Everything that would point that they mean to, it's just, they're not a particularly large organization, and they've prioritized you as targets instead of her. Right. So when she asks, are you the spy, I like crook my head, and I'm speaking in Romanian now, so that's hard for people to eavesdrop, um, harder. Uh, I'm going to be like, why are you looking for one? Well, uh, would you like to spend a point of trade craft? <laughs> uh, yes, I was going to say I can use trade what or craft for yeah. Nations. What organization do you want to pass yourself off as? Like MI6 uh, or SI? It could be any of them, and she's totally going to believe she it. She, I've been waiting for you. <laughs> is she British? Yes. Uh, yeah, then I'm going to... Uh, uh, actually, let me, ask, let me ask Pro this. Pro, what is the... What is the perception of MI6 among the British people in general? Like, favorable or unfavorable? Um, I mean, it's any government body, right? So it, it's an intelligence service that we kind of know. Um, it's neutral, I suppose. Okay. This is so, what I'll tell you, because you spent a point. She's been working with intelligence agencies. Oh. And she feels very special right now, because she knows oh, things okay. they do not know. And she's been waiting okay. to get in contact with the spies. Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to tell them I'm from Interpol. Interpol. Yeah. I've never met someone from Interpol before. That's false. Now you have. What? <laughs> <laughs> In Romanian, so it appears I've been, as they say, schooled. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm gonna say, just, just, just so you know, I don't have any points in flirting, but he's totally semi-flirting. <laughs> and she's living for it. She's like, oh gosh. He's more real than my books. Antal's really hot. Don't forget everyone. And he dances well, apparently. <laughs> and he bruises prettily, just saying. Can I do have a point in flirting, so can I like I flirt to like boost <laughs> Antal somehow? The wingman you know, like, skill. Yeah, you know. <laughs> He's it's, it's one of these things. Yeah. If the clock ticked on her dissertation, now it's clicked where she's like, okay, here's everything I know. So <laughs> there's there's a, a, a there's a new ballet that is opening up in town. It is the Ballet Brasov. And they they defected from uh 
the recent independent state uh, uh, of Crimea. Uh, there was this conflict in the Ukraine, and then the Russians got involved, and there was this ballet that was over there that said, no, we, want, we, we don't represent this, and they fled. Um, and they're putting on a new ballet called Strigoi. It comes right out of Romanian folklore. And for whatever reason, this Russian ballet is importing crates and crates and crates of Romanian soil. Oh, how inspired the set design must be. It actually leaves a bit to be desired. It's nothing out of the ordinary, but tch, I have very high standards. <laughs> I mean, she is a humanities scholar, right? Yeah. Um, um, okay. Um, do, do I get do I get any other information out of her that's pertinent? Uh, yes. She come by this information. Can we ask that? Is that yeah? I'm so like sketchy. Yeah, I'm like how do you, how are you involved in this? Okay. So <sighs> she Maybe blushes. Like she blushes just almost goes like beet colored and she goes someone told me she kind of like goes back to her beverage and kind of you know trembling hand she goes i uh, uh the uh, there's there's a british uh, minister of, of, of state and um he let us know of the significance of the ballet but How also how did he just happen to drop this information by you? Maybe I was poking when he wasn't in the room. Okay. An admirable skill. <laughs> she's like completely mortified right now. She's obviously trying to cover up the illicit affair she's having with this government official. Um, Can I do some reassurance up in here and be like, sweetie, all the... No, your internet. Oh no. <laughs> We've lost T. You see T just like fall over. The batteries run out. So it was just like. Uh, all that party. Okay, okay, Lily's back. We were about to describe your batteries shutting off. <laughs> I was just a good scene. I was just role playing out the scene by myself, and then it was hilarious to me. And then I was like, "Oh, nobody's moving. Oh no." <laughs> All right. So let's do. Let's recap that reassurance. Um, so I just lean in and I'm like. Sweetie, all of the government officials are having affairs. You're not the only one. We don't judge. I've had affairs. I look at the two very handsome, tall men next to me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sure they, you know, get it done. And I say this again without using any flirt. I don't have any. I'm like, and you're someone who, and you're someone who everyone wants to, would want to have an affair with. <laughs> you're very affairable. <laughs> so I don't want to say she's a hoe. <laughs> but yeah so the, there's there's some more things you should know um the 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 prima ballerina the ballet she's she's the daughter of of a dancer that that went missing in the cold war and she's she's a phenomenal dancer she's considered a, a prodigy and uh, her name is iliana dragoy and in it's it's a it, you, if you, there's going to be a reception, there's going to be a reception where uh, there's going to be a private preview of the ballet, but you would have to be well more than a student or an alum to get in there. And I smile and I'm like, that shouldn't be a problem. We're Interpol. <sighs> but of course. <laughs> And um, yeah, she's like, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to get going. And uh, am I, am I gonna see you again? As she looks at Antal, uh, and I'm like, oh my god, do we want to see? Okay, freeze time. Do we want to? Do we want to be able to see her again? Is this important? Leave it open. Come okay, on. I'll be like, we'll be in touch when <sighs> we need it. Or like, you know, like, like we'll call you, don't call us kind of thing, you know? So it's in a very exclusive to-do. It might be difficult to get in. And I'm like, are you offering? Uh, and I'm like, 
Madam, are you inviting me as a plus one? I wasn't invited, and I was hoping you'd invite me as a plus one, she says bluntly, kind of puts her hands... And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? She was nice. She gave us the info, and so when we infiltrate, I will get her a ticket. Woohoo! Uh, sorry, Grant's very excited, because I don't get invited anywhere, and even if I had to be invited <laughs> vicariously through NPCs, befuddling, charmy, 20-year-old flirtatious <laughs> PhD candidates at Oxford. That's what it takes. That's what the magic of role-playing is all about. Yeah, I mean, and, uh, and knows that networking is important, right? Ne- it she, is. She hangs out with spies, so cultivating her as a contact is a yeah. good thing to do. Um, Daekwon's gonna say, what, what house is it being performed at? Um, the Royal Opera House. And Daekwon rubs their kind of uh, face that's now got like a five o'clock shadow and if I may I would like to use my once again once a day success once a game success thing uh, to say I can just get tickets just like that with my art history oh <laughs> absolutely yes. art history you ever was mm, uh, no it's one of the ones that are on the skills that like you can succeed nice your okay. art is succeed yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so using our art history well, the art history, the art history gets it for you. So you know, uh, here's a couple of things that you know. We'll make sure that it, I don't gloss over these details uh, too quickly. Uh, so, uh, uh, David Eccles is the Ministry of State for the Arts, uh, who is in charge of this special preview. Um, the ballet is called Strigoi, and Ileana Dragoi is the prima ballerina. Using your art history, you are able to... Uh, Doesn't that mean, like, witch or monster or something? It does mean monster. <laughs> right? Because the Striga is... I, I've heard the word Striga, so you said Strigoi. Mm. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, yes. Nice. That's real well, old charm language skill. Just <laughs> saying. Yeah. Brilliant. And uh, so you're able to get excellent tickets uh, with the art history. Um, it's a VIP. In fact, um, who, what sort of folks would they reserve these special tickets for? Because uh, yeah, they're not just any. In I fact, tell me uh, where. Tell me where you want them. I I want them because this falls into the dossier. I want a um, oh, what are they called? A balcony? Uh, the balcony? The balcony ones. Oh, like oh, special the box, box seat. Box. That, yes, that's oh. what I want because nice. that's what was in the dossier with this exact ballet. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Maybe I should read more about the dossier. Guilty face, Charon. If no. I'm remembering correctly. I think you are. And then, um, um, it's interesting because also in the director's handbook you can find all these characters in different places throughout history, like what their ages and what they'd be up to. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, you're able to get good box seats. Are you going there immediately? Are you going to try to get in contact with uh, the politician, or are you trying to uh, investigate maybe where the Romanian soil is being kept? Because it wouldn't be at the theater; it would be at their uh, theatrical. So if we have some stores. time. We might want to do some investigs. Before yeah. Before we go. Yeah, but, I want to know more about the dirt. Also, there was some time where there was some preview before the show, so I, I don't know when that was. was I want to preview, break right? into the politician's office. <laughs> of course you do. That's my thing. I break <laughs> and then and then assassinate him. <laughs> see if that comes to that. Assume not, his I'm identity and take out. the stage. <laughs> not ruling out assassination, but it's not the first thing. Alright. So I'm here to support you. I'll do that if you want to do that. So um headed to headed to find the politician? Yes. Uh, uh, I have high society if we need to use that to find his office and things. So you'll either need to concoct a cover, um yeah. or uh high society won't necessarily be able to, to get you in necessarily. Okay. Uh but it might be useful once you get in. So, oh, great. Okay, uh, I will concoct a cover. Uh, I have eight points of cover left. I've only used two points so far. Um, I haven't used any of these. So I'm going to make another two-point cover. Uh, 
Uh, and I'm going to be a... I'm going to be a... This is going to be wild. I'm going to be a Jordanian prince. This oh. is wonderful. Um, Can I... I know there are very few Jordanian princes, but in this, <laughs> in this world of ours, there are many Jordanian princes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and his... Can... Name is Adna. His first name is Adnan. His last name is like very princely, so like lots of names, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. In something, in something. Please put that in check. They would have remember it. So the uh, <laughs> the um, as you come to essentially the halls of power, where the Ministry of State of the Arts sits, a uh, Jordanian prince. Oh gosh! And the individual you run into, um, he's in better shape than Chicken Little. He's broad shouldered. He had this this gent looks like he he does uh, you know a solid 90 minutes exercise a day um he's wearing short sleeves um a a a nice a nice sweater vest um despite the short sleeves he does have a somewhat uh unique tattoo going up his arm um uh, daquan would recognize that's from military service um you know and um he seems completely flustered because he's like, I can't get you in to see the Secretary of State. He's he's not even here right now. And uh, but I'm I'm happy to answer any questions that you have, Your Your Highness, Your and Majesty. I, and I, like, I I'm you know I'm supposed to be a really regal sort of arrogant. Your Grace. So I turn I turn to my my um uh, associate my not my associates my minions and I in French. I'm like, who is this silly man trying to talk to me, and what does he want? to Deal with him, please. Because both of you speak French, right? Or at least, at least, Daquan speaks French, right? Mm. I speak yeah. French. Yeah, mm. perfect. Um, can I pull out like a a tablet of some kind and do some digital intrusion, to, as if I'm as if I'm like, oh, we oui, un moment, well, un instant, and I'm like. As if I'm like looking up an appointment or something, and I want to do like some digital intrusion, and I don't know, put his ass on that calendar. Nice. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can uh, totally do that. But and now he's like completely humiliated. He's like, "How did I miss? How did I miss this date? I book all of his calendars. He's not here right what now." That? Yeah, what? he's just like, "All right, just whatever you need, I can do my best." Your Royal Highness Prince Adnan. And um, you can tell, he can probably do a lot for you. I look at him again, and I, I don't mind. So I'm like, please tell him not to address me directly again. I'm so sorry! <laughs> he realizes <laughs> too. Address the prince directly again. Um, and I would like to use some shrink, maybe, and be like, listen, we all make mistakes, you know, going into our usual thing. We all make mistakes. It's totally fine. Maybe if you could tell us where he is right now or what his appointment is, we can try and catch up and catch up. We only need a few moments of his time. He's in Italia. He's in Italy. Why? There's an opening of a new opera, and they wanted representatives from the UK government for this token of goodwill, and he's supposed to come back and report all about it. Uh, when uh, is I, turn he to them, I turn to T in French, and I say, tell him I need to deliver a parcel from my father to his office. I didn't oh, hear you. I'm sorry. Can oh, you... oh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 I tell you and, and Daquan in French, tell this silly man that I need to deliver a parcel from my father to, mm. to the secretary's office personally. Mm. I tell him. Nice. Yeah, okay. Um, there's no reason why he can't drop it off or leave it here, and I'll put it in. And, um... and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I say in, in, in French, I'm like, Personally. Personally. <laughs> All right. He, um, he opens the door. He goes, but if you need okay. any information, I mean, we got a lot going on in town. There's Perhaps while his grace is doing that, we can have a discussion yeah. about, um, do you, have you heard of this recent uh, ballet? And I'll just start making the small talk. Yeah. And I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to the office. I'm going to snoop. This is like as if you asked my older brother in the 90s about Star Trek The Next Generation. He's just like, heard about the ballet, and whoop, comes up. He's like, I booked all their travel. I helped. I, I played a small part in arranging. 
Yes, go ahead. Okay, T, if you want to gossip with him and get really bored talking to him, um, Pro, um, uh, Daquan can come with me, and I'll be in the office, and he can look stuff for stuff outside the office. Maybe, you know, we can mm-hmm. split up that way. Does that work? <clears throat> yeah, fine. It's good with me. Mm-hmm. What you find in the office, I'll tell you pretty quickly because it's easy to f- find it. Um, yeah, uh, in the office, the Minister of the Arts is trying to shut this ballet down, doesn't like it, is giving it negative reviews, is call- calling it repulsive, and does not appreciate uh, Quentin Watson, who's his assistant outside, enthusiasm for these new fangled arts. We need good British ballet by good British people, and, you know. The, the minister is oh, 100% he's very, opposed. He's, uh, he's a little, like, nationalist. A little bit. Okay. Okay. I don't <laughs> like him. Okay, I don't either. <laughs> as, as a biracial uh, Hungarian, um, you know, Lebanese <laughs> a man of the world, I do not like nationalism. Mm. Um, okay. So he's trying to shut it down. Uh, do we have an inkling? Oh, oh, the, it's, it's, it's mainly because of his of this it's not like there's no hidden agenda behind like secret service stuff right that he wants to shut it down <laughs> sorry chet are there any good british ballets nah um <laughs> uh could you repeat that sharing sir uh, yeah so um is it apparent to me that that's his main his main reason and that he doesn't have a secret service kind of reason to shut down this ballet no he, he's just not into it it's too avant-garde it's just it's not it's not what the people are asking for, and it's not what the Queen wants in uh, the Royal okay. Opera House. It's just, okay. it's too avant-garde and out there a performance. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then I want to look up and see, I want to look at the permits that he's been signing all these permits, I'm sure, right? Yes. Uh, especially for the shipments of soil and things. I want to see, is there any information about that? Yes. Everything to deal with the opera, including every... Uh, item that they've had shipped uh there are uh seven crates of uh romanian soil that were shipped over including a crate that contained a coffin red flags and where were they where were they put uh because this is this would also be you know an agricultural hazard, right? There's an soil across state lines. It has to be tracked really carefully, right? It has to be tracked very carefully, and in in this, there's that it's it's good that you note that because there is a uh, like a Western District docks that doesn't have modern. It's not outfitted for modern shipping equipment. You couldn't fit mod, uh, modern vessels there. You can only fit older, smaller ships, and it's a more traditional loading. So in Dock 64 in the Western District is where the Romanian uh, warehouse is being, or rather, the Russian ballet rare warehouse. Okay. They are Russian. Are we? Are we in Oxford, by the way? Right now, no. Right now, okay. you are uh, outside the halls of powers, the seat of government. Ah, um, okay. There's a Ministry no, of the no, Arts no, office. That's where you're like, at. Why is the Minister of Culture in Oxford? This is so bizarre. But <laughs> yeah. right now, oh, we we cut. To we cut. Things. Yeah, we cut. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, great. While uh, uh, until I was doing this, uh, I'm gonna look around the room and see if I can find since he's the minister. Um, kind of the, 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 the kind of regional minister. I'm gonna look around for his uh stamp of governmental approval. <gasps> um, and I'm going to with my bureaucracy, uh, kind of get a letter and uh, request access for a personal agent, uh, for maintenance on the MI6 database. Mm. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah. 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 That happens. That sounds like a forgery. Not bureaucracy? Mm. I'd let bureau- bureaucracy work. Yes. <laughs> 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 right. Uh, I'm to roll in I'll spend two points. Yeah, there's that. that oh. Oh. Well. Seven. Is bureaucracy an investigative skill or is it a no, general skill? Enough. If it's investigative, no rolling, so you're, oh, you're no, fine. Then, then yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah. investigation. You're good. 
Also, I really I like that system of you just spend points and you know stuff. I love it. Yeah. It's really cool. It's, so I, I side like eye several other systems like, I've been playing this week. Yeah, I feel like this be like, this is important stuff. You need to Oops. know to progress with the adventure, but you roll badly, so you don't know it. And you're like, okay, now what do I do, right? I don't <laughs> find the secret door. I need to find the boss. Great. I'm just sitting out here with no knowledge. I just can't I tie any knots today, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I do that for, like, future plans, because one of our... Oh, our long-term plans? Great. Yeah. 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 Okay. So and Quentin so Watson, no you... information of the of this. Is there any other information, T, that you think we would have been looking for? You might get well, it I'd... talking to the guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I think I'm talking to the dude. Like also trying to distract him because y'all are taking a while in there. So I'm just like. You are. What's up? <laughs> um, I want to know more about this opera in Italy. <sighs> it's some traditional boring it, 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 i think it's not even like that it's it's swan lake it's played out <laughs> it's a ballet, not, even, not even an opera not even it's an opera yeah, version it's, of swan lake there you go uh, okay. no it's a performance of of uh oh if it, if i said opera then it's turin dot but if I, I i think i meant ballet if it's yeah, i op- once watched the ballet version of carmen so i'm sure there can be an opera version of swan lake well, there's a ballet uh, in several operas, like Mozart composed. There mm-hmm. were ballet dance oh, sequences. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, the conversation we're having, I guess. Yeah, this is totally what we're having. Literally. <laughs> you notice, like, he's got petroleum jelly on his teeth to make his smile even, like, sparklier. Like, his teeth <laughs> shine. Yeah, yeah, That's this is like... That old... people do? <laughs> it is here. And he's, <laughs> he's just old school. Which chopstick time? Um, so, you know, not like that new avant-garde ballet that just came to town, right? That's much less traditional and much more out there. It's, um, well, it's, uh, it's, it, it really is. And it's, like, it's beautiful and it's violent, but it's kind of a beautiful violence. Very high-end productions. The Mm -hmm. blood in the performance looks realistic and you're into that (laughs) yes yes i am i love it when artists are daring like it could be this traditional like little like fake but no this is more like Uh 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 (laughs) sorry everyone so tempted to go into shrink and learn more about this guy but i'll just file that away and i'll say oh yeah and i hear that the prima donna is stunning um, Ivana, Il- Ileana, Ileana. Do you know more about her? Oh, she's been performing professionally since she was 15, and she's just, um, you know, they said her, her mother, Mahela, was a great dancer. Ileana is has far surpassed her. In fact, that's the most miraculous thing about these dancers. They never get tired. They have the best conditioning in the world. They have the best technique. If you'd like to go, I can get you tickets. He tries to say to impress you when you already have the best tickets. (laughs) I already have the best tickets. (laughs) We got some tickets so we can give it to the grad student, remember? Are you oh. are you looking for a plus one? He imposes. Um, I would love to have some tickets, but you know you've already seen it, so I would much rather give that opportunity to someone who hasn't had that opportunity yet. <laughs> well, I happen to be the master of the reception. He's MC uh-huh. the reception. Ah. Uh-huh. Wow, I'm impressed. I'll, I'll I'll throw some flirting down on this. Um. Yeah, so basically, I the intent of what I would like to do is, A, keep him distracted away from my friends who are taking an odd amount of time to place a package mm-hmm. in a room. Uh, B, you know, make him feel good about himself and try and understand a bit more about, like, the culture around the ballet life and maybe what pulled the minister away. Here's here's what you also get from from the flirting so the the minister was just it was scheduled it was routine and also mm-hmm. the minister was looking for reasons not to see this grotesque ballet again mm-hmm. he watched it one mm-hmm. time and was just like i couldn't eat dinner for a week mm-hmm. um and then um 
but you realize too, you managed to get backstage passes out of this guy. So it's not just enough to go there. He's like, well, there's a private reception afterwards, and if you'd uh, like to meet the the dancers, I can I can yes. get you in. I I am a man Very of much. great power he says and then as he kind of like pops himself up and it's one of those things where he deflates like a whoopee cushion when he says just power <laughs> pancake now oh you sure are <laughs> you sure are such can, a can powerful he, powerful man can that be the moment where the prince walks out yes and he's like, i'm so powerful and the prince like <laughs> in at that moment. Uh-huh. and here's how it ends he attempts to shake the prince's hand before he goes. I just like away. do one of these. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> we both do it at the same time. <laughs> Recoils in fear. Oh! That's where Let's we touch pass, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yeah, the prince, the prince actually doesn't even acknowledge that he did that. He's like, no, no commoner would do this. Like, <laughs> Chris Adnan, he is the man holy above. <laughs> <laughs> Don't oh, make perfect. me sing the song. I love this cover, guys. This cover is going to come back at some point. Okay, oh, I'm He's probably going to get you executed at some point. <laughs> Jordanian prince. All the heads I a, turn. I have a Turkish French uh, scientist and a Jordanian prince as two of my covers. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sensing a trend. <laughs> Alas. Uh, I will fan the tickets at them as we walk out, and I was like, backstage passes, private reception, after the ballet, meet the dancers. Wonderful. Where nice. would you like to head to next? You can head straight to the reception, or you can go to the warehouse. It's up to you, though. Is there time to go to the warehouse if we're also going to go to the reception? Oh, your agents. Great. Uh, let's go to the warehouse, then, right? It's not right? Mm -hmm. Good to do it in the daylight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Um, so you find yourself down uh, several blocks away uh, from the Royal Opera House, and uh, there are four individuals um, that are standing in, in front of this warehouse. Uh, they look surly, and they, they're, they're dressed very crudely, uh, the same as you might... Um, any any shift working warehouse coordinating uh scrub uh and they are keeping a close watch on the front of that warehouse door <laughs> not letting anyone in or out so tia and i are good at disguise should we do some disguise yeah they got like a uniform yeah like a warehouse brand nope no, no nothing branded it looks like they're wearing clothes to keep themselves warm comfortable uh, and allow freedom of movement. So let's disguise as that, like, you know, something like something like some of that, and, and we mm -hmm. can carry a clipboard or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clipboard. Ultimate disguise tool. Yeah, really, though. <laughs> no, no, someone, someone once told me if you carry a ladder anywhere, no one questions you. Ah, do someone we have like, a ladder? We land with a ladder and be like, hey, I'm here, and they're like, oh, okay, go in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to say how often that has worked, Sharon, <laughs> but it works more than you think. Um, yeah, ladders and carry, clipboards. You know what? Uh, let's carry, um, all, let's disguise the three of us, and let's carry a ladder and a clipboard. Yeah, I'll have the clipboard. As yeah, you walk um, to the front of the warehouse, as you're coming up, they're like, nut, 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 nut. they're not speaking English. What, what are, are they speaking? <laughs> uh, they are speaking Romanian. Yes! I'm um, glad I picked that language up. <laughs> and, I, and I say in Romanian, and now I'm, you know, in disguise. Oh, do I have to roll for disguise, do you think, or? Um, you can describe the disguise you want, but yeah, uh, so, this is like what I'll tell you, though. Yes. This is a very close-knit group, and this isn't like a large Romanian mafia. These are very specific hands that are hired to watch the warehouse door. Oh. You can disguise and not appear as an agent, but there may be... Uh, can I use forgery and have a document as though it's from a, an instruction letter from a higher-up in the mafia? So, they're Romanian, but they're not mafia. They work with this ballet company. Oh, higher up. You can the make ballet it a ballet. Company. Yeah, yeah. 
Ooh. Can I do that? Do you speak Russian? Uh, I do not speak Russian, unfortunately. I speak yeah. Romanian. I do you do speak Romanian. Huh. Can I, um, uh, with my kind of preparedness then, I know being in that room, uh, found out that this was like a Romanian kind of warehouse and uh, when I was typing a letter for MI6, I also typed a letter for this dark maintenance because that minister also uh, helped with this uh, shipment. As we found out. Yeah, it could be the letterhead of the minister. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's some authority figure. Yeah. <clears throat> that'll that'll work. So they'll accept that, and they they switch from Romanian to English pretty quickly when they see this document. Now we can. What are what are you here for? Oh, and like, we an inspection. We were told this is an agricultural class B dangerous good that could bring in uh, bacteria and thing. We just have to keep it under constant inspection to make sure none of the dirt has um, spilled because that could endanger British crops. There's no soil in there. He's trying to lie through his teeth. And I'm like, we have the permit letter about bringing in soil. And I show him the thing. But you don't have a warrant. Of course, we have a warrant. Do you want us to get a warrant? We want to make the smoothest. <laughs> yeah, you know these are sweating, and they're just like, he feels the heat because, like, one, like you're an intimidating trio. <laughs> yeah. You're getting ready to go to <laughs> see a ballet, yeah. and on tall, you know, we've seen the artwork where it's just like, do you want me to get a warrant, a death warrant? <laughs> do you want to die? I'll skin you alive. <laughs> I'll feed you to my one. dogs. Yeah, and like, and and so he's just like, you can tell this guy he's not as tough as those Romanian mafia you met in Romania. He's essentially a stagehand. You do notice that he's got he's got a pistol on him. He's he's okay. armed. He knows how to carry himself. But he's like, all right, let him into the warehouse. Fuck this day. We're gonna get fired, and we need the work. And, but then, then I say, I say, thank you for understanding. We're just like you. We're just doing our job. <laughs> you are not just like me. You are getting me fired, and you will have your job, and I will not be able to do my job after today. But whatever, I'll get another one. I mean, <laughs> opens the door for you. Yeah, and... That face that Pro just did. I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> there, you right. notice one of them is already <laughs> dialing his union lawyer, where he's like, oh, mm -hmm. shoot. Uh, mm -hmm. we should, uh, not we be, well. Well, not to come down and yell at you to prepare oh, the case oh, and to defend get a him. job. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Sons we go of... in. Okay, so in the warehouse, it's uh, dimly lit, uh, but brighter than the uh, offices in Gibraltar. Um, you can see that there's just racks and racks of costumes. There's two-story backdrops that are folded up into plastic tubs. There's crates filled with set pieces. And uh, you find three boxes of soil under the backdrops. Okay. He said there was no soil. He deserves to be fired. Yeah, he does deserve to be fired. No, he was like, no, we could tell he was lying, though. He's, He's listening he at the door. He goes, <laughs> maybe I do deserve to be fired, but. <laughs> okay, so in Van Helsing's kit, oh, there was a lot of holy water, right? There was a ton of holy water. Are you right. literally gonna no. bust out Van Helsing's kit and be like, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we know we heard about we know there was soil, right? And then I know what worked well, seeing Jess, who I admire a lot. Um, not Jess, uh, 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 ah, Jisoo. Jisoo, yeah, Jess's character name is escaping me. That's rare. Normally, I don't remember people's real names. I remember their character. Name. <laughs> um, so Jisoo, you know, last time when she saved my life from like when Jisoo and T saved my life from marauding rats and like. <laughs> Uh, she poured holy water that had worked really well, right? So I want to have, br I think we would have brought some of this holy water on us um, and start pouring it into that grave dirt. <clears throat> Ooh, yes, 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 yes. You notice, like, the whole color of it and quality and consistency of it, it just turns into sludgy, sludgy mud afterwards. And it, it, it you hear almost like an audible gasp from the earth cry out in pain. As you pour holy water on it. Uh, that was unexpected, you guys. Yeah. You just killed that dirt. 
Great. I think it, Daquan's going to look for the, the coffin that was supposed to come. Yes, so I'll do the dirt thing. You look for the coffin, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. It'll take time um, to pour into all of them. Coffin's it. not here. Okay. Is, is but you could ask the guys to find office? out. What's that? Is it like a foreman office, like on the top of the in, in, in this? In this mm, not up, not up high. It's still fair. It's fairly low. This warehouse, um, but the folks outside might be able to tell you about the coffin, depending on how you talk to them and what skills you use. So, did we take any physical documents from the office, like the shipping manifesto? Could we have? You would at least have that? photos of it. Yeah, I'll so... definitely photographed it. Yeah. Cool. So I'll go over there with my clipboard and I will flip the papers in a very imperious way mm -hmm. and say, it seems as though we are missing a few boxes. Can you direct us to the location where those might be stored? That one moves from time to time. The old woman makes sure that it moves. Who? Uh, yeah, the, uh, the doctor. The doctor that travels with the ballet. She, uh, she and makes sure that... Name? Uh, Dr. Olga Lupin. Lupin. And I and make a note of writing it down. Uh, yeah. Olga well, Lupin. Can I, can I have, take a sample of the grave dirt as a chemist before uh, doctoring it? Before adulterating mm -hmm. it? Uh, we, uh, yeah. To study mm -hmm. later. We'd assume that you do. We'd assume that you palmed it and then destroyed it. And you're like, I'm going to keep this little Dracula dirt. <laughs> no one could see it. Um, so I'll just ask, um, do you have a contact for Miss Lupin? Because we must account for all of the shipments that have come through. We don't want any bacteria getting loose and starting a pandemic in our country. Oh my god, too soon, no. <laughs> well... <It's> true. <laughs> um... <sighs> You would have to ask her. She's always with the dancers, and uh, the dancers never come by the warehouse. They are either at this uh, opera house or at their hotel. All right. Or, and then there's like one of those monologue moments in my thinking brain, or at this private reception. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of course, uh, yeah. That's where the hot dogs. Yeah. You're definitely going to hobnob with the artists, right? That's the point of many. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, they will be. Uh, there will be a uh, uh, a, a, a performance. Uh, the reception is held at the opera house, so mm -hmm. um, you would you would get there. So, uh, curious, is there anything you want to do to prepare for the reception? What's everyone wearing? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, okay. Are we? What are we? Are we going as? What? What's our what's our like cover there, you guys? I think we should go as the prince, the prince and company. Okay, should we do that? That makes sense to me. What do you um, think? I think uh, if, if you do prince and company, I'm gonna do like um, art historian, art journalist. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe you can be my skills. cultural attaché. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like you're the art, you're like the. This the is what this means, your highness. <laughs> yeah, you're like. Yeah. You're like uh, the University of Manama, like professor of art history or something, yeah, right? Like that. No, that's Bahrain is Manama. What's Jordan? Oh uh, my God, my geography is so terrible. Mm -hmm. um, what's the capital of Jordan? Oh my God, why am I so bad? Uh, <laughs> it's important for me to, to Google, so I'm gonna. I'm waiting. Oh, so you're man. you're at <laughs> you're at the reception. Oh, what's very similar the name. capital okay. of Jordan? <laughs> Slap. <laughs> In my defense, Amman and Manama are very close-sounding cities. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so maybe in the University of Amman, you're like you can be like art history professor or something, right? Yeah, I like and that. you can be my she can be my cool um, like personal assistant person again because she was. My name's Stacy. <laughs> I just put on glasses. <laughs> I just put on fake glasses and and just them, and I just go. Mm, I'm I'm mousy. <laughs> and I love how you all oh, your standard line is Natushpa, Natushpa. <laughs> Natushpa. Still <laughs> play. <laughs> Great, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I, I would dress up very fancily because it's a it's supposed to be a fancy night. So I'd be wearing a, a 
You know what? I'd be wearing national dress, right? I'd be wearing mm. traditional Jordanian clothing. Yeah, it's a posh night. A heck of a time obtaining. Like, you're probably going to have to rob a museum or something. <laughs> or actually rob... Maybe the actual Prince of Jordan was in town and you robbed him that <laughs> night in order to wear his clothes. And at any I point, like... anyone could Google the Jordan, the Prince of Jordan, who you just happen to look just like. No, <laughs> Which would be great. I... I feel like this is one of those like side scenes montages where it's just like Antal getting too deep into character and T also <laughs> getting too deep into character and it's like a Devil Wears Prada moment where T is like running around the city like collecting pieces of traditional Jordanian clothing because I'm the personal assistant. Nice. Uh, okay, while googling the Jordanian royal family, yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty like like. Um, like similar to what I know of Arab clothing, uh, royal Arab put in the UAE. Yeah, it's like the you know, the black with a like, gold trimming and the headdress. Mm. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, great. Nice. I love this. Yeah, because, because on top of the disguise person, he gets really deep into his mm. disguises. So. Yeah, but it's London, have, right? Uh... It's easy to find stuff in London. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a, a just a short black velvet bolero and a very tie-dyed um, gown on uh and yeah my glasses and i have my hair in a ponytail and i have my clipboard it's a smaller clipboard it's a more portable clipboard for functions maybe your ipad is a special clipboard with a built-in ipad like the ipad nestles in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes exactly okay and we need to get this straight is it your grace your highness your majesty uh, uh it's your highness it? your highness yeah your mm -hmm. highness got it you're an actual great, prince. Like if you were uh, crowned, you would be your majesty. Daegon yeah. just has this like, like kind of like a green like, suit jacket on, with, like a bow tie, got some glasses, like circle glasses on. And... Oh, and we all have a pin of the Jordanian flag. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're so great. Um. You, I you were. I spent half our game session deciding on the kind of dancing we do, the kind yeah. of outfit we wear. I love this. Yeah. You, you uh, need that every once in a while. <laughs> I, I remember, remember Invisible Sun when we had to find our dates for the yes! the big ball, and then we had to come up with our outfits. <laughs> yeah. Sun be wearing like the breath of a thousand um, um, virginal cows or something as your dress, right? <laughs> the, um. the, Breath of a Thousand Virginal Cows. That was my punk band in the ninth grade. No. Um, all right. Uh, so um, y you arrive at the reception, and I do want to cut the camera to the other side of London where young Margot was waiting to be picked up by Antal and taken to the reception as a plus one. Uh, she's wearing a beautiful gown, too. It... Um, uh, it, it it's uh, it has the pattern of all the constellations and a very 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 uh, uh, well crafted cape over her beautiful ball ground like something out of uh, Beauty and the Beast really um, or at least the Oscar ceremony for it so I had to throw that to the chat I was like wait for it the heartbreak's coming oh, and uh. she's just like. I could have danced all night, uh, but uh, but she never like, did. Have you mailed her a ticket, though? No, it's better if she her heart is broken, and then you yeah. have to play Starcrossed with her and me no. later, where it's yeah, like, oh. We, we, we honestly, Antal literally forgot that he promised her the ticket because he had did. better spy things to do. He just she's gonna end up. Really she's gonna end up your new soul solace, where you, like she's like, hey, no, I get it. You're a spy. I'm a spy. We do spy things. But didn't I didn't I get the ticket from her from from the from the dude? You had she she had she would have had tickets from Daquan, but she was expecting to go with Antal. It's fine. Uh, we have to have a little. We'll we'll pick up the pieces later. There's a whole role play game about doing that. So we'll we'll repair that broken heart. Um, <laughs> somewhere, Cat Tobin's like, "What have they done to our game?" It's like it's a dating sim now. Um, <laughs> That's all we wanted. <laughs> All right, so the reception, everyone who's anyone in the London art scene is there. Um, uh, Quentin, the uh, Mr. Mr. Powerful's there. 
Um, and, and he's there kind of presiding over things, trying to, you know, be seen with everyone. Uh, there's, there's a number of politicians there. There's very wealthy donors. Um, and, um, there's, um, uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of well to do, uh, folks here. Um, as you come in though, you know, there's, there's a, the ushers like, oh, well, you know, make sure that, uh, you don't, you don't wait too long, uh, because, um, when the show starts, you know, we just, we cannot have the show interrupted. And I like waiting for him to go. Oh. Done yeah, that that would have been said. Yeah, that would have been said to to Daquan or uh, Ms. Mousy over there, where it'd just be like, oh, please, please, your 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 mm-hmm. highness, mm-hmm. let you in. They're like overly formal. Like they actually do like the the proper greeting. Their etiquette is spot on because of the Royal Opera House. They have dignitaries from all over come over. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. And mm-hmm. they have training about how to deal with. They all almost the- yeah. In fact. Mm-hmm. They judge like everyone else here, but they don't judge your group because you're that good at your cover where they're like, oh, they <laughs> and Jordan, they know how to treat the royals. <laughs> Wait, look, random question. By any chance, is the aged, overly forward cult leader here? <laughs> no, but he would be in town if you want to look him up later. He's okay. not at this show. Because I'm like, we left him alive, right? And I'm just curious. He is totally alive. Yeah. Doors in London. And you would know, he's he's in town. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So, are we, what was our, so, freeze time. Was our plan to watch the opera, or was our plan to go backstage during, not the opera, the ballet. Uh, Was our plan to go backstage during it? What were we, what was our plan, you guys? I thought we would watch it and then go to the reception afterwards. A, recep- a reception is after a thing, right? Yes. 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 This begins with a reception, then there oh. is a pod to preview, and then there's an afterwards where yeah. they, they meet. So uh, the private That's performance cool. is part of this. There's a reception cool. and a preview. Yeah, cool. In that private part, we meet and greet the artists and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this is where we wanted to meet the yeah. The doctor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the doctor yes, and Ileana. The doctor, if you want to, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we will sweep our way over there. I will push people out of the way and gesture and, you know, <laughs> make way, make way. Well, so they let you know that um, uh, when you're looking for Ileana, they, they explain that uh, you wouldn't be able to find her because she's actually performing very soon. So she's in preparation. Mm. Uh, so is Martine and Daria, Stella and Dennis. They are our principals. They are our leaders. But there's other dancers mm. that you can meet. Um, and that's what that's about who they... Miss Lupe? Oh, she's backstage just in case something happens. But you could probably, well, we'll see if it's all right if you visit her afterwards. She's usually very busy and she's very private. She's very... You do not think that the Prince of Jordan is very busy and very private? There are reasons that we have for asking these things. Well, unfortunately, if you're coming here, how busy could you be? They kind of say with a shrug. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Disrespect! (laughs) Mon dieu! (laughs) They they realize they're like, jolly good. (laughs) You know, they they understand, they go... we could try and sneak backstage to talk to the dancers, and if we get caught, we could just say we were so enchanted, we want to speak to the mm-hmm. dancers. That's an idea. Mm-hmm. You'll be able to or, get backstage after the show without any issue. Yeah. I was going to say, like, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see the show maybe even okay. before we talk to people, because... I feel like the show is going to have clues in it that will... Okay. Yeah, so you, do you think it's important to talk to any of them before the show at all, or do you think we should just watch the show? If there was, if the doctor was available, I would have said, yeah, let's just talk to her and get like a bit of an introduction and then maybe go deeper after. But yeah. since she isn't, I think we might as well see what then, she's doing. In that case, show. could I, in, as we're schmoozing, could I use my, um, what's it called? A human traffic, right? Isn't that what it's called? No, tra- uh, human, human train. train. Human, human train. trafficking is a different skill. That is a very oh, different thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Oops. Sorry. Scratch that. Um, 
Yeah, my human terrain. I was, th I was thinking of the traffic mm -hmm. analysis skill as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I got you. I'll tell you this human terrain will definitely get you some information after the performance. Oh, great. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And you have other skills. And um, what I'm trying to do now that we've played a few sessions is to not name the skills that maybe you should use, but mm -hmm. think think critically about what occurs during this performance yeah. and what you might. There's going to be some obvious ones, be it yeah. uh, vampirology and things like that. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah. Art history and um, even any... Uh, uh, the whole thing. Um, yeah. So there's, um, as you're seated for the performance, um, there there are three large photographs near the stage of uh, the principal dancers. And um, there's a brief introduction by Mr. Powerful, Quentin Watson, uh, and then uh, a small string and percussion group sets up beside uh, a small curtained area. Uh, and there's a couple of a pair of spotlights that are illuminating red hangings. The curtains pull back, and uh, you can see some of the individuals who are photographed, um, Martine and, and Stella. Um, and so they do a very traditional, very 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 uh, precise uh, 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 pas de deux from the uh, ballet. And this comes right out of the fourth act of Strigoi. Um, you're watching as the dance goes on. Is there anything you want to try to, uh, 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 ascertain from the performance? Yeah. Um, uh, why don't um, you guys, I've been talking a lot. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, I think that the main thing I would be watching for is this blood that has been described and what and that what that whole scene is like also you know with my very vampire familiar eye just looking around being like any of these people vampires any of them look like vampires <laughs> so um do you even we'll vamp see. bro yeah do you even vamp bro <laughs> we'll see we'll see what they reveal so um there's a couple ways you could tell usually vampires these are some things you know they don't show up when photographed um, do any of you have the photography skill? Oh god. Just yes, I, I do. Just took it out. So you would know with your photography skill that the photographs of these dancers are not faked, so the three dancers that are about to perform mm -hmm. uh, are human. They are not vampires mm -hmm. currently, or at least when the photos were taken. They seem oh, to be now. pretty they seem to be modern portraits. Um then um, the lights go out, they come back on, and the ballet begins. Um, Dari and Dennis. So, yes, go ahead. Did you have no, something to say? Yeah, I was going to say, um, as we did the, 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 the pre show and before that and stuff and everything like that, can I kind of keep an eye out with uh, trade craft and um, just kind of notice, just to make sure there's no um, so kind of messaging within any kind of dancing or forms that's like within the ballet or in the set design that is like being kind of transferred sure absolutely and what you can tell is uh as far as the art direction goes and uh the way everything is set up there's almost no audio visual like so there's no amplification amplification there's no hidden messages on any of the sets or the costumes currently at the moment um and um, let's let's take a uh, let's uh, begin the ballet. And so Daria and Dennis stand in the middle of the stage. She's wearing a torn black dress and a matte black. He's in a matte black tunic. Uh, they're facing each other. The drums roll, uh, and then uh, the bows begin to attack the strings as the dance begins. Um, so this per in a ballet called Monster, the bows attack the strings. Yes, <laughs> and this particular pas de deux is from Act Three as opposed to Act Four. It is very modern in style, and there is a passionate exchange between the two powerful bodies of Daria playing Magda, um, and she's showing hesitation in offering herself to the king of the Strigoi in this act. Um, the tempo and the insistency of the music increases and the dance becomes more and more heated. Uh, you find 
your own pulses uh, speeding up and you find your breaths uh, becoming heavier just watching the dancing. It's exhausting. I and am going to use my diagnosis skill um, now that I've been um, shown like magic, like we, we've seen or whatever magic, supernatural stuff. I want to try and ask Jane, is some are they doing some kind of like subliminal thing or some like mind control music? Like what is what is going on with our bodies? My body. Um, Sharong, each of you are going to gain an additional point uh, to defend against any mind control attacks uh, because you can tell that uh, while the dance itself is not hypnotic, uh, there is something supernatural working here. Um, we get to the point uh, of the dance where it reaches its climax and you hear the audience all gasp as Dennis plunges his head onto Daria's neck and she jerks as a trickle of blood escapes his mouth and runs down her arm. I look then, at Chi immediately. The, the dance resumes languidly uh, and the king manipulates the dazed Magda in an imitation of the earlier dance and blood continues to flow, occasionally drops flying off as she moves. The strings go silent and the drums beat in time with the audience's hearts as the king pulls open his tunic and uses one sharpened fingernail to open a line of blood on his chest then he pulls her head to him, and the lights fade. When the lights come on again, the curtain is closed, the string, string quartet remains behind, performing selections from the ballet, and I need each of you to make a difficulty three stability test to resist mesmerism uh, from the dance that was performed. Nice. But we get an extra bonus point from the... You each get plus method. one. Yeah, so it's just going to be a roll of a d6. And roll twenty. And it's a difficulty three? Yes. So I'm going to actually just spend... Oh, it's, I can't spend anything, right? It's not a spending skill, is it? Uh, stability is. You can spend points, okay. or you can just roll a d6. I got, I a, got a three. Uh, and I'm big numbers tonight. Oh, I forgot the R. Sorry. Slash R. Um, 1d6 plus 1. Nice. <laughs> Ikwan's one's so cool. So, yeah, everyone <laughs> everyone uh, appears to have passed, and none of you fall under the effects of mesmerism, but you can see most of the audience is dazed. Um, and with that, they begin to clear everything out for um, a, a reception. So uh, the mental attack, it's pretty easy to shake off. Who was looking to spend human terrain? Until. It's the prince. Mm -hmm. mm. So, um, you notice that uh, Daria, uh, as as uh, she journeys through um, sort of the the event, the continue of the uh, continuation of the reception, that. Um, Daria is sort of leading uh, a new figure that you see, Ileana. Um, and Ileana is, is following very carefully behind. There seems to be almost like a religious significance in uh, the way that Ileana is led around. Huh. Uh, we should go talk to her, especially T, who knows about occult stuff. And we know that we were mentally, magically attacked. So mm -hmm. it's important to learn about this dance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there, let's see here. I also have some art history. Do we see anyone near her that we think could be Olga? Uh, not out here, but you're pretty mm -hmm. sure she would be backstage. Right now, mostly just the dancers, Dennis, etc. Uh, okay. Stella are out here. And you know, Stella is on Dennis's arm and um, essentially, uh, you know, he's just kind of like taking care of her after she has been uh, mm -hmm. bitten in mm -hmm. a performance. Mm -hmm. um, Does it look like there's still marks on her neck or a bandage or anything? 
No bandage, but she was very clearly really bitten. Uh -huh. She was really okay. bitten. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, I would like to lean into my flattery and, uh, you know, reassurance general skills as I would like to approach the group and very eloquently explain that His Highness Prince Adnan of uh, Jordan would love to meet the dancers and make their acquaintance. Oh, by, by all means. Um, uh, 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 how should we refer to him as the kind of lean in almost like it's almost kind of cute the way they come in like these poor artists don't want to disrespect the prince and this and is like one and of the they're highlights probably like of their life. 19 years old right like they're, they're like very now, young they're like, yeah mm -hmm. as i lead them over i'll just say you will not make direct eye contact with his highness you will refer to him as his highness and you will also make sure to not touch his highness okay <laughs> So without like they all look away from you. Hello, your highness. They all say away from you. <laughs> <laughs> They're like laughing at that. Um, um, you notice Ileana uh, doesn't respond to this as she's sort of being, and her eyes seem to move from uh, the one escorting her, and then every now and then she looks at old old muscle but old mr powerful who's like i'm in charge of this reception right it's kind of every now and then go to him and every now and then go back to daria Interesting. uh who mm. is the dancer who bit her by the way is he here um uh yes yes he is he's is he uh, escorting the he's escorting the girl that he bit okay so okay uh, just kind of holding on to her uh, Dennis and Stella, and Daria and and Stella. Yeah. is essentially leading Ileana around. Okay, so I am going to try and uh, talk to the dancers and um, engage. I, so my, um, I have no art history knowledge, right? But that fits with my, I'm a royal, right? And I'm going to ask them what they thought about the I'm trying to, I'm trying to you are pretending to be a royal yes <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly but which, which fits like royals don't necessarily aren't art history scholars, yeah right um I'm, I'm I'm what I'm tall is trying to do is glean if they anything because you know we were hit by the supernatural attack try to glean if the dancers are aware of anything or anything weird about this you know something like that oh and I'm, well I'm gonna, I'm, yes I'm, I and they say they say yes and the responses and this is what uh, Dennis responds to you. He's like, the, the, we dance as we're instructed. We dance as we are trained. And isn't there such a power in the passion of the dance? Isn't there something literally stunning that touches your soul as you watch us dance? Which of you has the lowest stability right now? I'm Just in 10. total. Six. I actually was to say it wasn't that, but I'll let us see. Um, which of you has the lowest stability right now? I'm at six. If it healed, I'm at six. It, it would have been healed, yeah. I'm at ten. What's Daquan at? I'm not uh, there in this conversation. I, I was going to oh. say it where we uh, were doing it, but I'll... Uh, Got it. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is uh, just yeah. a, so important to home. everyone. Oh, in general? because of In the, general. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, I got seven. Okay. So I'm lowest, which makes sense. This is great. So Dennis is uh, talking to the prince, and Ileana turns to the prince and sees, kind of comes over. Um, you feel an icy chill run through your veins as her eyes meet yours on toll. Uh -oh. And let's see how you do. Was You're gonna she have one a of the dancers that was photographed that we saw? No, she wasn't photographed. Uh, hmm. Well, she succeeded this, so your brain starts to fog. You have a chance to resist if you would yeah. like to. Uh, I'm going to try to. I might fail. Well, this would be a stability test. Okay, and I can, I can spend points stability? Uh, sure, yes. 
Okay, I'm gonna spend two points because I'm going into panic mode. Every time a supernatural effect hits me, I start be freaking out because I, I, I the yeah. first thing I think of is rats, right? I'm gonna develop mm -hmm. a phobia of rats, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I mean, no. Content warning, there may be rats later. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant on top of the I know, but I'm adding that just so the audience and you know that I'm not intentionally trying to come after you. What happened to Chicken Little, anyway? Speaking of rats. Oh, he's 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 off uh, flirting with a Russian ballet dancer. He's like, well, you know, I did a little dancing back in my day, back when I lived in Korea. You lived in Korea? Yeah, for like a week. Um, <laughs> I did four plus two, so six. Well, she Nine. got a seven. Damn. Yeah. So, um, here's a couple things that uh, that apply to you now, um, and each of them will come up. So. If Ileana attempts to do anything you to you again, yeah. it's going to be harder by a step. So whatever difficulty it would be, we'd raise it by one. Yeah. Um, if you see any any blood, you're going to yeah. have to make a stability test. Exactly. Um, and you may begin having nightmares. Um, now, this only occurs currently. You don't know how long this will go. But Ileana um, looks you in your eyes and um, then turns to T and says, Tell his highness, if you would be so kind, that I find him very interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm relay that. Yeah, I'm speechless. Like, I am scared and, and I'm having PTSD flashback and stuff. Yeah, I lost this contest, right? So... Oh, you're not having any PTSD flashback at all. You're having a whole new sensation that involves um, <laughs> being mesmerized by the vampire. This oh, is almost okay. Okay, yeah, this I'm, is quite I'm speechless because I'm mesmerized by the vampire, by the vamp lady. I pick up on this. Yeah, you and would that, <laughs> I turn back to Ileana and I say. We are, his highness is very flattered into speechlessness. He has lost his words. He cannot express how beautiful your dancing was tonight. Her eyes look towards elbow, Antal, elbow. then looks back to you. She goes, oh, he expressed it perfectly. I'm very appreciative of his attendance. And um, oh. hmm. cut camera to Daquan, because I'm curious what's going on over there. Are you, like, already backstage digging through everything? No. No, yeah, so um, I, I, I was going to say, um, like, uh, what happened with I got all interesting, so they want to bump in. But um, while they went backstage to go smooth with the people, um, because I, I know um, our history, I know this place, um, I, I was going to say if I could find any service elevators or any, like, secret kind of um, worker um, kind of hatches that would lead down to the basement, if that is where a coffin would be. Hmm. So, um, they would probably keep a coffin backstage if they had if they had transported one in here. It would probably be too much work and probably make too much uh, obviousness. Uh, you, they they'd make too big a scene if they're like, "We're gonna get into the basement of the opera house," and it'd be like, well, "But why? If you have things you need to keep up here, keep them up here." Uh, however, um, you there's a, a stagehand. There's a technician who's just kind of been, like, bumming around, like, the reception, and every now and then they're stealing, like, hors d'oeuvres. Like, they send a guy to sneak out. And he, like, this used to be my job, but these things. Steal, steal, make a plate, and then bring it backstage to the techs. And, and this guy is kind of, like, caught by you, and, you know, you give him the shame, shame. And he's like, oh, um, there was a coffin, but it's not here. It's kept someplace else. You could probably ask, you know, someone backstage. There's people that know a lot more than us. Could ask the shifty guy or something like that. Shifty guy. Shifty. There's a bunch of shifty guys back there. <laughs> like this is just like a local AV tech that like works the house lights. Um, he's like, you know, you've got people from this crew that mm. they'll tell you all about coffins, vampires, dancers. Old, oh, oh, the old lady's blood collection. Blood collection. Well, uh, yeah, it's I sick too. Show me. I'm a. You got a pass, right? You do. Oh, you have sorry. backstage pass. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I like the arts, 
but I like making the arts a little better. But you know, I don't judge what you do, anything like that. You know, writing papers well, is hard and all. It opens, well, yes. <laughs> opens the door. All right, gives it to me. <laughs> Sorry, gr a little bit of grants coming up. Oh yeah, I don't mind. You write papers, stuff like that. I prefer to make the art. It's just me. No. <laughs> Full disclaimer, I've written a lot of art criticism over the years, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, yeah, he takes you backstage. Backstage is pretty well kept. There is a locked off area, and there is um, a, a number of stagehands working around. Um, and as you come back, uh, he goes, all right, there's, where's, where's the, uh, the old shifty guy? Um, there is a, uh, a, uh, like a well-to-do, like, steely-eyed, uh, you know, door manager back there who sort of manages the opera house, um, who's just kind of watching and trying to make sure no one gets out of hand. He seems extremely nervous that a famous art historian has just come back here because he's like, I've worked hard to memorize things for today. Um, you must know who I am, yes. I, I must be very careful what questions are asked because I don't know shit about this weird avant-garde Strigoi opera. Um, <laughs> I, walk, I, I walk over to him kind of sensing this and I, I adjust yeah. my glasses and kind of mess with my cufflinks and I, I <laughs> say, uh, yeah, so you're the one I'm supposed to speak to. I'm uh, Damien Legeist. Uh, very nice to meet you, Damien. My name is Harvey Cole. Um, uh, how did you enjoy, uh, the pod preview? Oh, it was great. The transitions from one section to the other was beautiful. The fluid motion was, uh, I could eat it up. It was so uh, appetizing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Refrains from, from vomiting in it, in his mouth. And he's just like... Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not like those YouTube ballets that you see. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> very finely produced. Uh, I prefer the ballet, uh, with the poor Russian princess who escaped the communists. Um, it, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, Anastasia. Um, yes, yes. You, uh, I'm here to just peruse backstage, and I believe... Sure, the, sure, sure, sure. I believe, I, I can't remember the doctor woman's name. Oh, you're looking to... Uh, Dr. Lupin. She, yes, I believe she was waiting for me in her room to discuss more of the uh, works going on. Absolutely. Um, she used to be up here, but she moved down there. You do know that there's a basement, and you do know that they wouldn't let anyone get in there. And you find out pretty quickly through Harvey Cole that he tried to stop Dr. Lupin from setting up in the basement, but she insisted on doing it. Um, so, um, he, uh, he uh, opens the basement doors for you. He goes, do you want any of the guys to go down with you, or uh, do you want... I, I should probably stay up here, make sure they don't screw yeah, so up. If, if someone could show me the way, that would be nice. I'll go. And uh, old Chicken Little disguised as a stagehand. He's been working here all afternoon. He goes, ah, oh, the new guy. The new guy. Chicken Little goes with you. <laughs> as we're going down, going down the stairs, and Chicken, chicken Little, who's, who's next to me now, um, uh, goes first. I'm going to uh, just quickly text. Uh, Antol and T and just kind of uh, just give directions and say where I'm going. And um, T realizes I'm still foggy, right? So. Mm -hmm. Would I... So if Daquan's scene is wrapped, um, I'm just kind of curious if I have seen vampiric mesmerization before Make and if test. I would wrecking, uh, shrink you test. Would. You totally know that this is vampiric mesmerism cool. right off the top of your bat. And you might know a couple other things, too, as I double check. Cool. Um, so uh, with the shrink, it's going to be a difficulty four. You're allowed to spend any points from your shrink pool that you have. Well, are you it's like, my are you... MOS also. Oh. Then you automatically succeed. Uh, yes. 
I love how you like a psychologist <laughs> club owner. It makes sense. If you're a club owner, you got to deal with a lot of human psychology. That is you one start thing to, I have learned. There's a few things that you realize that are going on. Um, first, uh, the scene that was enacted was a very accurate representation of the process by which vampires create uh, their assign, their spouse. Uh, mm. They We talked a little bit about this earlier, how they might have... A, uh, a bride or uh, mm. a love. They can't, tr the assign can't turn other people into vampires, but there's someone that they control and have power over. And that's mm -hmm. literally uh, what the uh, ballet depicted. Mm -hmm. um, you also note that uh, uh, in order, in order to uh, perform that, you know, real blood must be used. Uh, so your best guess is the dancers are Renfields, meaning they are working for uh, vampires, uh, or they are vampires themselves in some regard. Um, the other thing that you pick up on with your MOS is that in this crowd, it wasn't just you that was affected, it was everyone. Uh, Daria and Ileana are moving from person to person in the crowd. It wasn't just on tall, looking into their eyes. And you also pick up on some of these folks that are in the crowd they're not just politicians and donors. They're fake donors like you. There's a couple of fake royals. These are government agents that are trying to infiltrate to figure out what's going on here. And they are all quickly falling under these vampire spells. Oh, damn. Mm -hmm. I love how there's more than one fake royal here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the king of... <laughs> I just want to of this room. Prince somewhere there who's actually yeah. like from Swansea or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I love it, I love it. Man. I'm just picturing this room with a bunch of like Halloween costume depictions yes. of different royals of different cultures. And this whole time we're here thinking that this is all like super legit. And then yeah. I like blink my eyes and, and it's like. Of Azerbaijan. And we're like, uh, I saw you at the CIA last week. Yes. <laughs> they see Anto coming in and like. <laughs> Royal like, oh god, enough one. I am kind of helpless right now. You need to Yeah. Yeah, I I'm, I'm I'm going to. So Ileana has moved away from us at this point. Yes. Um I'm going to uh very subtly, I don't know if the other dancers are still hanging out with us, but just try and elbow on a couple of times and then just loudly be like your Highness, we have another appointment elsewhere. We must go and do more of the greeting and meeting of the people. And I'm, I'm just dazed. Uh, this so way, sir? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, may I please touch your royal personage? I will guide you. Uh, <laughs> I do it. I grab you and I drag you out of there. <laughs> As I'm like walking away, I'm like holding clipboard and like checking the message that uh, Daquan sent and trying to navigate back there. Do I know how to like, can I splash some water on his face? Maybe I take out some of the holy water and I'm like, wake up, bro. So it will be some time uh, that Ileana will let you him off the hook mm -hmm. uh, but she must be the one to do that and he'll have opportunities to resist it might be one of those things you can help him uh, mm -hmm. overcome it, it over time <laughs> you have him sniff the holy water like smelling salts just <laughs> uh. wafting in smell this water it smells like the Pope you are compelled compelled <laughs> the garlic from Van Helsing's kit. I just like the idea of you going into Van Helsing's kit and being like, let's shoot him in the leg with a silver bullet, have him eat some garlic, and then uh, <laughs> down it with holy water. Let's take it. That's bad to work. Yes, steak him. Yeah. All right. And then we'll go and try and follow Daquan. As you go backstage, uh, there is another worker who's far more fidgety than some of the others who kind of goes past T and slips paper in your hand and immediately gets out and starts walking off. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. read the paper? Yes. It says, help me in danger, have information, Isle of Dogs, tomorrow noon, Pier 34. Is that a place? Yes. Okay, cool. It's near um, the warehouse that you uh, had found earlier. 
Interesting. Um, how helpless am I right now? What's that? How helpless am I? You're right not now? helpless. You're just bothered by the sights of blood. And if Ileana okay. tries to take control over you, she will. Okay, great. <laughs> so now that I'm not in her presence, I'm not just dazed anymore, mm. right? I, I can still. No, have... yeah. And there were many people that were dazed. Great. So I'm. I'm. Nice. I'm. Do I know that? Uh, this happened. Something happened to me based on Liliana. Oh, for sure. I would explain it. I think once we yeah. got away. Also, it would have been I'm like very upset. This is what happened. Why do all the spells get cast on me? By the way, <laughs> notice uh, like I'm the target of all the sorcery. Uh, but uh, but like Antal is really upset. He's scared because again he's thinking of rats, rats, rats. Mm -hmm. Can I can I shrink Antal during this time and just be like I'm here to listen. With compassion and with no judgment. Over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try and pull myself together and I, I nod, like, you have something to do. Uh, great. Uh, what is the thing? Daquan needs backup. Okay, great. Yes. You would find out through Harvey Cole that Daquan's headed downstairs. Daquan, as you get downstairs. Oh, sorry, can I strip off my um, royal robes? Yes. What are you wearing? Uh, Nothing. I'm wearing, this, I'm wearing my suit underneath. <laughs> you were wearing a full suit with royal robes on top. You have the only to way to do it. To shed your disguise. I'm, I'm we're like, both masters of disguise. We know this. And this is like a montage moment where I flash back to an afternoon of Antal just like yelling at me and berating me for not finding him this royal costume, and then he just like yeets it on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> And I just so, nod and smile and follow. So, downstairs, uh, there is a single light. There is an elderly woman who, uh, you see this day, Quan, as you sort of come to the top of the stairs. They don't really notice you there. She has a long bench, and there's like six dancers on it. Uh, there are two uh, men standing by the wall. Uh, they are. They have nine millimeter uh, pistols, as as the others did at the warehouse. And the elderly woman is going. Uh, she's, you know, calling young woman to young woman up, and is drawing blood from each one. Uh, I think as I as I'm as I go in, I don't uh, as I'm with uh, Chicken Little. I go in front and I. <laughs> I don't make attempts to be quiet. I'm like walking down loudly and I clear my throat a few times. And as I get to the few steps below, I just say, what was her name? Out of character, because I really don't remember. Olga Lupin? Olga Lupin. Uh, the werewolf, just, I'm guessing. I just say, Miss Lupin, I presume. Pleasure to meet you. Hey, we got some raiders in chat as well. Thank you, raiders. Hey, Thank hello. you for the raid. Appreciate it. Uh, she looks up and she mutters uh, s some words in Russian and looks at the other two. And they draw their pistols. Uh, okay, you hear it and she goes, get them out of here. And then um, uh, there's these two guys. Uh, they're just like, hey, uh, so... Uh, that's the way they talk. I guess they're like <laughs> northeastern tough guys, wise guys. Hey, um, you know they're just like. So I go on and get. Uh, no trouble. I hope you realize that your weapon is highly illegal on British soil. Yeah, no shit. It is. So is drawing blood illegally from all these women and like the daughter. Like, <laughs> don't. Illegally, I thought it was some kind of. You know, I don't shame. I mean, this ain't exactly a sterile, up coded environment. Probably nine or six violations. Then they start like bickering, like like two old folks. They're like, "Yeah, in our days when you used to steal blood from young women illegally, we at least did it with sanitary means." They're like, "Yeah," and they did it voluntarily. You didn't lure them into a basement. Yeah, they're like, it... "It's weird where they're like <laughs> smugly like shaming the crimes they're committing." As that's happening, uh, uh, and they're kind of bickering, the guy w with the 9mm, um, I want to um, uh, quickly kind of take out a knife and just uh, along the artery in the neck and uh, 
try and grab his gun if I can. Ooh. So make a weapons check or hand to hand, whichever you prefer. It's gonna be a difficulty three. Okay, I'm gonna spend uh, two points and weapon. Oh shit! I didn't need it. That's, yep, uh, you got him. <laughs> yeah. a seven. Yeah, you got a seven. So you, uh, yeah, you... I, uh, <laughs> I, as they're bickering, I uh, just kind of put the, a knife to his throat, grab his hand. The gun on it and just point it to the other person with the gun. Uh, so he like, drops his. He's like, he looks at Lupin and he's like, "You're up Shit's Creek. This is a badass. We got a badass over here." <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like to continue our polite conversation, then. Doctor, she says. Doctor, my apologies. Thank you. Uh, T and uh, Antal, you would be coming down. Antal, as you come down, I need you to make a stability test. Difficulty yeah. three. Assassin, take one. Can I help at all with that? With no, it's friends? just, it's the sight okay. of blood. It's not that yeah, anyone's yeah, trying yeah, to control okay. his mind. Hmm. Oh, I keep, I keep forgetting to do the stupid R. The game's the quick roll on this. Oh, I rolled a six. Yeah, you're yeah. doing fine. So you, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was the pep talk that he gave me, uh, that's like helping me. Yeah. Four damage on tall. Oh, I'm <laughs> treating this character worse than any character I've played. Uh, <laughs> to be fair, it's not your fault. <laughs> so the rats, the doctor looks at Daquan and says, you're not, you have no idea what you're dealing with here and if i don't keep the supply flowing to her the havoc she will wreck upon this nation who is her which wife oh. she speaks the name iliana dragoy bride of bride. dracula yeah. Noting this down. Oh, wow, and she's brainwashing me. Great. And with that, I think as she reveals Ileana Dragoy, Bride of Dracula, we're going to cut to black on that note so we can continue the second part of this opera mystery scandal uh, and kick it into high gear uh, when Jess gets back as well. Yeah. I got so the tickets. <laughs> My notes here is Ileana Dragoy, and it started with, okay, prima donna of the ballet, Strugoy, cool. And then it moves on to say, definitely a vampire. And then I just added, oh, also Bride of Dracula. <laughs> what a character development. Also, look at, okay, so we've faced, so far, we have faced uh, Renfields, sorcerers, mutant uh, vampire blood pumped soldiers, mm -hmm. mutant giant Bigfoot sort of people. Yeah. Now we're facing a bride of Dracula. Love also a bunch it. of nerds. <laughs> bunch of aunt nerds. <laughs> yeah, it, it, Margo's gonna show up with Jisoo later. Like, I heard your dates didn't show up. Yeah, they <laughs> screwed me over. Well, let's go say hi. And then they show up with Uzis to save you. <laughs> <laughs> no one tricks me. So... Uh, Let's go around and, uh, you know, hope everyone enjoyed. You know, it's been, it's been, you know, a very interesting week for everyone. It's been, you know, emotionally uh, powerful. Um, and there's been a lot of good and also a lot of uh, uh, harm that's occurring in the world right now. But, you know, I appreciate these players coming out on Saturday and putting on a hell of a game and being excellent role, pl role players, you know. Uh, check check the archives for Pro's uh, solo session, uh, diving into Daquan's backstory when it gets posted to YouTube or in our Twitch archives by checking out the videos, um, as well as if you are just catching up on the series, uh, we have the entire uh, run of the show as well as our prep sessions every now and then players come on to talk about their characters and clues they want to pursue as well as questions they want answered. Um, but do check it out on YouTube, and I'm very grateful for the players coming out. So um, with that, let's go around and uh, let everyone know uh, how we enjoyed today's session, where we can find each other online. And we're going to go in reverse order. So we'll go uh, Pro, Sharon, and then Lily. 
Yeah, no, super, super good game. Uh, we got to uh, be princes and ballet. We got to do ballet and go to Westminster and forge a government letter. You know, we got to do all the good spy stuff. So it was super fun. Um, you were having me as always. So it was good to play uh, Daekwon, this amazing cast. Uh, I am Pro Restarter. You can catch me on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, all over the same place with the name. Uh, and uh, uh, I also have a Patreon that is patreon.com slash uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord. I'll put a link in chat now with a full POC LGBTQ plus cast. Uh, and we explore uh, DD uh, Tadori world using uh, that system, Shadow of the Demon Lord. It's a great system. Yeah. You can uh, get two, two, two episodes now uh, before the month release on the Patreon. Are you doing the, like, 10-episode campaign, or is it going to be longer than that? Uh, it's definitely going to be longer with, with how I've edited it. It's kind of an actual play meets drama uh, uh, with full uh, kind of music score. And that. So, yeah. Do check it out. I've listened to the first two episodes, and what I really like is there's an emphasis on the, the drama as well, and I think... Uh, you capture uh, the heart of what the designer was going for, you know, in the sort of final edited deliverable. Um, Sharong, award-winning oh, game designer. <laughs> I'm Sharong Biswas, uh, uh, game designer, writer, and artist in New York. Uh, you can find me on Sharong Biswas on Twitter. And some of my games, some of the ones that have won awards, are on itch under Astrolingus. Um, you can, that will be linked to my website, which is linked to my Twitter, so you'll be able to find everything. Uh, but also, I want to shout out to the book I'm co-editing with Lucian Khan uh, right now. That's also going to be published by Pelgrain coming this summer, so soon. Uh, it is Honey and Hot Wax, an anthology of erotic art games. Art ga it's about role-playing games and LARPs about sex. Uh, LARPs are also role-playing games, but I don't know why I said and, but you know what I mean. Um, so uh, do check that out. And I really enjoyed today's session. I really, really miss going clubbing um i really like going clubbing so it was nice to like that you could you guys could probably tell i was getting very excited in that scene describing a lot because i really miss going clubbing. i really miss being next to a person let's I... say i have not been next to a person except the grocery store clerk uh since you know for like the last three and a half months so um so i really enjoyed that and as usual i really enjoy how the sessions are really balanced in terms of like we do some chatty stuff. We do some Snoopy stuff uh, by snooping, not like the dog. Uh, we do some like, you know, whatever clubbing stuff and then vampires attack us or whatever. And it was less action, so no hand to hand, but it was still like a, oh no, vampires attack moment at the end. Uh, like sidekick dance attack, um, you know, gives a new meaning to the word dance battle. Uh, that was really cool. Well, as always, appreciate you and everything you're doing both in and outside of your work with Pelgrane Press, who is a sponsor of this show. I dropped some links in chat. Uh, do check it out. And if you're interested um, in uh, getting a discount, here is a voucher code for 20% off. That's good till August 31st. Uh, likewise, if you're interested in this sort of Russian ballet, elements of this adventure were taken out of a book called The Edom Files, which is part of the Dracula dossier campaign. Um, the original version is set in 1971 during the Cold War, but we made some modifications to set it to modern day. Um, last, and certainly wonderful, Lily, how are you? Hi! You know, it's been a week, uh, but that was a much needed game. That was my first bad game after being off this week. So super awesome to play with this cast. I love playing with all of the people. Yeah, it's just the silliness combined with the epicness is always a great time. And like vampires also terrifying and just finding out everybody's a vampire. As soon as anyone is like remotely cool or powerful, they're a vampire. So <laughs> shucks. Um, yeah, you can find me on the internet. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch at Lily, Lily Sparks with an X. And yeah, you can follow me if you want. I, I, I do stuff. I do a lot of streams and stuff. But mostly just come here and watch me be T, a silly club owner, following around a bunch of cool spies. And I really appreciated the Daquan and T moment today because I felt like they had the furthest like gap of interaction and understanding <laughs> to just constantly being like silly and they come being like oh. <laughs> well we uh, so yeah great times 
certainly we appreciate the energy and enthusiasm you bring and overcoming great technical difficulties to get here this game mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. steadfastness and uh, definitely follow all of our cast members online and including just just couldn't be here uh uh, Jess is off fighting the good fight today. Uh, as for me, my name is Grant Ellis. I'm an independent content creator for tabletop role-playing games. Uh, I've shipped about 14 different tabletop games. Uh, the current one is we've done 76,000 of 125,000 words. Uh, follow me on Twitter at WisePapaGrant to learn more about that project. Uh, I also do a, a actual play pro podcast called The Fairest of the Seasons, which is a good society actual play. Uh, we are getting close to the end of that actual play, but I'm very proud of that game. Uh, I've, I've put all my production know-how into it. Uh, I'm also the broadcast producer for Posea's Follies on Gilding Light. Uh, you can always catch me here as WebDM's Twitch producer. Uh, before we go today, uh, we'll Ron, leave with the intro. Can I give another shout-out? Uh, what's that? Can I give another shout-out slash slash? 100% you can give a shout-out. Yeah, I do want to say, um, so um, if you might, if you don't know, uh, Sub-Q Magazine, which is a small magazine of interactive fiction, uh, they, are, uh, they just released their penultimate issue because the next issue is going to be their final issue. They've been running for five years. Uh, they just released a statement about why and everything. But I would, uh, they're still going to remain online. Um, and I've been involved with them for a little bit. I've, I've done um, one story, then a column, and then I just published my last of my three-part story on them. But everyone, if you're into the interactive fiction, like choice-based fiction or parser fiction, uh, you should check them out because they're, you know, they were really great. I think it'd be really cool if they see a lot of traffic right before uh, they um, close because they were a really great magazine that supported indie game designers who make interactive fiction. And they had, you know, big name people there, like, you know, like Anthropy and people like that. But they also had small name people there, uh, like me. Um, so uh, do check it out uh, if you can. Um, and I have some work on there if you like my stuff, so. Sharung, there's no, there's no small names, only small social media followings. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I had. <laughs> All right, so we're going to leave with the intro, then stay afterwards. We're going to raid uh, Jess Go. Uh, Jess is part of a large uh, itch.io bundle, and uh, is a good friend and has guest starred on this show, Nice Black Agents. So au revoir. Have an excellent one. Goodbye.